forward. All right, good morning, good afternoon, happy um, Wednesday, everybody, hump day. Uh, so glad that you guys could join us. We're doing, hopefully we're finishing up our Alaska, right? So um, again, if you're with us, hopefully you have caught up and completed all the other prior um, Alaska trainings that we've done. Uh, they are all on, um, resume share, they are all on our YouTube and our um, uh, list of the trainings. So let me just show you really quick. All right, so here's our YouTube channel, okay? So Alaska part three, we're on part four now, and hopefully gonna get our final um, certificate today, okay? So uh, glad you guys could join us. Thank you for sticking around with me, hanging out. Um, they're a lot of fun, and again, as you know, a lot of amazing perks, guys. Um, I just posted in um, here, uh, Puerto Rico, um, 1 p.m. Central, guys. So uh, I don't know if we'll be done with that, but if you guys want to jump off and go over to there or something and finish this later, but uh, win a fam trip, okay? So again, lots of amazing opportunities with our, our um, company, okay? All right, so everybody up and ready and rearing to go and learn more about Alaska. As you can tell, I got my voice back, so that kind of helps out. Um, all right, Jen, congratulations, thank you. Um, no, this is part um, five that we're doing, six, no, four, 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 four. Um, and just so you guys know, um, we're gonna do the sandals, um, like program on Friday and Saturday. So again, hopefully if you've been with us at least six months, you will be joining us for that. Um, and then we're doing um, the princess final exam on Sunday. Uh, we do have three more electives to do, uh, but we're gonna finish those and then do the final in the same thing. So be ready to get that one completed. Um, <clears throat> The uh, uh, Sasha, the Puerto Rico one that I uh, was showing you, it's in the chat group. So you can go in there and grab that link, okay? Um, I'm not gonna put that in here right now because this is our Alaska training. We wanna get going on that. Um, but if you wanna register for that one, the registration is in um, certificate workshops, it's in uh, beach bosses, it's in um, uh, perks. And again, if somebody wants to share in there, that would be great. Okay, guys, so let's let's go to our training. Uh, you're welcome. So again, uh, uh, Princess, oh yeah, I'm sorry, Princess, uh, we rescheduled to the 9th at 1 p.m. Thank you, Gina, uh, because Sunday I'm actually going on a boat tour at the resort. Um, so I'm here in Cancun for two weeks, guys. Uh, no, I'm not rich. Uh, five free nights as an agent and then free airfare uh, through um, Frontier that I got at Thanksgiving. Um, and then I have a timeshare here. So I'm just paying for the all-inclusive for the other nine nights. Um, so again, and I'm making money while I'm here. So, you know, again, as a travel agent, guys, you can make money anywhere, laying on the beaches, on a cruise, you know, going through looking at the rainforest with the sloths. <laughs> so again, share, share, share the business, bring your friends and family, they can come with you, you know, um, all my kids are agents, okay. Uh, so we traveled to Disney World every single year and get in for free, okay. Just kind of wanted to share that with you. All right, so we're going to go to training. Again, make sure everybody can see here. Um, if somebody can watch the chat box, I'd appreciate that. Uh, so as you see here, we've got three more left. And then we are Alaska specialists, okay? So we're gonna start here on South Central, home to Alaska's most populous city and two national parks. In this module, we'll learn more about what your clients can see and do in this region, okay? More information is gonna take us into the program. And who doesn't want to go to Alaska? I, that's that's what I'm going to do, the canard training. 
um, I'm going to use that one for um, my Alaska cruise. Okay. Um, so again, guys, take advantage of these. Um, the link that we're on, yes, right here, copy. There you go. That should take you into it. Um, hopefully you are already registered and stuff. Um, again, I want to quickly show you, and again, I'm sorry um, uh, for those that want to really get started, but um, we just posted the May calendar. So again, right here, Sandals, um, uh, Delta, United, Hawaii, we're doing Hawaii this year, this month, Singapore, um, Israel, uh, the Golden Triangle, and True Caribbean Specialist, okay? Um, and that is um, the May certificates, okay? And then, of course, um, on Sundays, we're doing the final exam for Princess, and then we're going to start on Cunard, okay? Again, you get a free cruise here and a free cruise here. Now, again, Cunard is very <laughs> finicky. A lot of people do the test or do the training, and it doesn't accept it. So um, we're going to see how it goes this time. Um, Kennard is aware of it. It's been going on for over a year, um, but we'll get through it. Okay. All right. Everybody good? Let's go. Okay. Bum, bum, bum. Here we go. All right. So we're on South Central, home to over half of Alaska's population. South Central is a playground of activities from world-class fishing to hiking and viewing, wildlife viewing. Mountains and lakes, South Central offers the advantages of remote, sorry, it keeps popping up saying it's unstable, but that's the fun of traveling, okay? Um, <clears throat> Hiking and wildlife viewing, mountains and lakes, South Central offers the advantages of remote wilderness, but with its location on the road system, it remains easily accessible. World-class rainbow trout and salmon shimmer brilliantly, beckoning to prospective anglers. South Central has the amenities travelers seek while serving as a gateway to the wilderness experience. Ge geography. Um, mountain ranges, lakes, rivers, oceans, volcanoes, broad plains, glaciers, and fertile uh, valleys all combine to make up the diverse South Central Alaska region. Tidewater glaciers flow from the coastal mountain ranges into the Pacific Ocean, which borders the region to the south and west. Roads wind through the mile high Kenai, Kenai uh, Mountains, which uh, make up much of the Kenai Peninsula. Anchorage sits in a bowl bordered by the Cook Inlet and Chugach Mountains. The Mantanuska Susisna Valley, Matsu, is a fertile glacier, glacial outwash framed by rivers and mountains. To the east lie Prince William Sound and the Copper River Delta, largest continuous wetland in the entire Western Hemisphere. Many species of wildlife, marine life, and birds and fish find the geography and climate of the region hospitable. The climate and weather there. Uh, so again, you think Alaska, freezing, right? Uh, South Central's climate and weather is as diverse as its geography. Overall, summer brings long sunny days and a need for sunglasses and sunscreen. Temperatures average 60 Fahrenheit, uh, but can dip as low as 40. Um, and rise into the 70s. Coastal regions can be mild, wet, and sometimes breezy. Further inland, the climate is drier and temperatures can be another 10 degrees uh, warmer, okay? Fall usually has rainier uh, weather along with the color changes in the trees and ground cover. Locals look for termination dust, the first snow of the mountaintops by mid-September. Snow is often on the ground by the end of October and in the higher elevations. There is often enough accumulation to partake in winter sports. Uh, winter brings more snowfall and a range of temperatures along the coast. Temperatures are often freezing or slightly above. Further inland, temperatures average at 20 degrees, but can fall as low as 10 degrees or lower. Into the Matsu Valley and Copper River Valley, temperatures are another 10 degrees to 20 degrees, um, colder than the rest of the region, okay? 
All right, so you can see the little map here. Okay. Um, historical background, again, you're going to learn about history. Alaska's indigenous people have called this region home for more than 10,000 years. Western culture has been there for more than 200 years, brought great change. Captain Cook came to Alaska in the late 1700s looking for the Northwest Passage and found instead Cook Inlet and Turn Again Arm, named because of the shallow waters in the waterway, forced its ships to turn yet again. Denayani Athabascan indigenous people settled on the land in Kenai prior to the 1700s, but Russian fur traders arrived in 1791 and established the site as their second permanent Alaska settlement. Um, after Alaska was purchased from Russia in 1867, uh, further exploration for resources resulted in the development of the South Central region. In the summer of 1900, prospectors discovered enough copper in what is now Wrangell St. Elias National Park and Preserve to warrant the construction of the Kennecott Copper Mine. At its peak, the Kennecott operation employed around 600 people. The high-grade ore veins were depleted by 1938 when the company and the residents abandoned the largest and most developed community in the region. Though the scenic ghost towns no longer produces copper, it now offers visitors a wealth of historical artifacts nestled in a stunning setting. Oil was reported in the mid 1800s, but a strike occurring in 1967 on the Kenai Peninsula fueled industry development in surrounding communities. There was a small gold strike in Hope in the early 1900s, but it was the need for the transportation at that time for the growing territory that sparked the establishment and growth of what has become the largest community in Alaska. Okay, so you got that? Uh, uh, Anchorage. In 1915, Anchorage was a tent city, a construction camp of about 2,000 people for the Alaska Railroad, as it was being built from Seward to Nanana in the territory. The 1930s Depression era saw farmers from the Midwest states invited to colonize the fertile agricultural valleys of the Matsu. Statehood in 1959 saw the population of South Central Alaska growing and then access, how are they going to get there? Well, whether your clients wish to drive, fly, or cruise, they can travel to South Central Alaska. And once they arrive, take the Alaska Railway. Railroad can add a dimension to their Alaska experience. You have the Ted Stevens Anchorage International Airport. Welcome visitors from all over the world with year-round daily jet service. Anchorage serves as an air travel hub with scheduled service to smaller communities throughout the state. Next to the International Airport is Lake Hood, which is the busiest float plane base um, in the world. In the winter, some places exchange their floats for skis, allowing them to land on frozen lakes and remote snow-covered landing strips. Some, or tax, some air taxi services leave from Merrill Field, located on the Glen Highway, about two miles from downtown Anchorage. Cruise ships visit some ports in South Central. Most use either Seward or Whittier as their ports of embarkation and disembarkation. Transferring passengers to and from Anchorage as the main arrival hub uh, via train or motor coach. Passengers can arrive or depart directly on the train from the Sheffield Depot at the Ted Stevens Anchorage International Airport or from the Alaska Railroad Depot in downtown Anchorage. The railroad is also used by independent travelers wishing to travel south and visit Seward for a day trip or an overnight excursion, or visit a whistle stop destination like Spencer Glacier for a day hike. Service is also available for those traveling north to Talkeetna, Denali National Park and Preserve, Fairbanks, or any other whistle stop destination in between. Accommodations, wide variety of accommodations options in South Central Alaska, including most major hotel and motel chains, private wilderness lodges, remote cabins, hilltop B&Bs, oceanfront inns, downtown hostels, campgrounds, and RV parks. It's encouraged to reserve space for your clients well in advance to ensure the accommodation of choice and avoid disappointment. 
Because there is such a variety of options to be sure to ask questions to ensure you know exactly what your clients will be expecting with their overnight accommodations as amenities will vary by location. How about dining? From fine dining to grab and go cafe, South Central Alaska provides a variety of culinary options. Many locally owned and even some chain restaurants serve Alaska grown vegetables freshly caught seafood, and other uniquely Alaskan fare. Local brew pubs, specialty pizza places, coffee shops, and reindeer hot dog stands will help ensure your clients find something they'll remember. Dining is also available on many tour excursions, including the Alaska Railroad and Dayboat Tours. There are many grocery stores and convenience stores throughout the region and discount chains in the larger communities. Small communities always have at least a coffee shop or inn. Entertainment is year round. South Central Alaska enjoys a lively entertainment and arts culture. Many events happening both indoor and outdoor. There are community uh, art festivals, summer solstice and Independence Day celebrations. State fairs, one in Kenai, one in Palmer and winter festivals. The Anchorage Fur Rendezvous, Fur Rondi is a two week celebration taking place mid February through the start of the Itatarad Trail Sled Dog Race, the first weekend in March. You can also refer to TravelAlaska.com for scheduled events. So that may be a test question, guys. Shopping. Shops big and small are eager to welcome your clients. Gift shops, department stores, and one-of-a-kind boutique stores abound in South Central. Whether shopping for souvenirs, fine arts, clothing, or gear, the opportunities and options are immense. In the summer, shopping opportunities spill out into the streets with farmers markets, roadside stands. Some specialty items available in South Central Alaska are uh, kavilti, uh, yarn made from the soft down under woolip of the Arctic musk ox. Items such as mittens, scarves, shawls, and hats are hand knitted in a traditional patterns by native Alaskan artisans in remote villages and sold through um, Umingmak Musk Ox Producers Cooperative, which has an outlet in downtown Anchorage. Alaska Wildberry products made in Homer and Anchorage and sold in shops throughout the region, chocolate, jams, and jellies. Uh, Alaska native art and crafts, often ivory, bone, wood carvings available throughout the region. Uh, birch syrup products, caramel candies and sauces, parkas and cuspucks. Colorful outer jackets with braid and rickrack in both summer and winter weights, often worn with fur rimmed hoods. And then what to pack there traveling through the South Central is bound to bring a variety of weather conditions and activities. Prepare for the activity and dress in layers is the best advice. You can give your clients when it comes to packing for this region. Good walking shoes, sunglasses, and diverse clothing select selection so your clients are comfortable no matter uh, the weather, um, no matter the weather is important. Uh, there are plenty of stores throughout South Central where your clients can purchase anything they may have forgotten. Okay, let's watch a short video.
righty. <clears throat> back here. All right, and welcome to those that are running late. No problem. We just got through the first page. Just watch the quick video and now we're going on to step two. So again, we will wait for you. Don't worry. We do not leave anyone behind. That's kind of weird. Um, Anchorage and surrounding area. The Anchorage area offers an abundance of experiences, including wilderness, trails, culture, walking, wildlife, and mountains, all within the city limits. Anchorage is the largest city in Alaska, home to the state's largest airport, offers a variety of services, accommodations, and transportation options. It is located in the heart of the wild country, Moose Walk City streets, Beluga whales are viewed in Cook Inlet. Bears are in residence, backyards, and sleds uh, race down 4th Avenue. On a clear day, six mountain ranges, Chugach, Kanai, Takintana, uh, Tortrilla, um, Aleutian, and Alaska, as well as the tallest part in North America, Denali, are visible from Anchorage. In addition, Anchorage has been recognized multiple times as an all-American city. Hold on, guys. I'm so sorry. Um, Linda, there's somebody supposed to come to my house. Eric, who is that? Is that Nikki's son? I have no idea, but I know Linda's at the house. I just got a weird message. It says, hey, Marnie, it's Alex confirming if your home in Vegas really yours. Type not interested if interest. Oh, it must be a stupid uh, sales pitch. Sorry. Yeah, no worries. I'll watch for him and chase him away. Yeah. <laughs> it get Aries after him. Linda, Linda oh, takes care of my fur babies. So thank you, Linda. You're All welcome. Right. You're covered. The so cities? sorry. This might be a stupid question, but I don't want to mispronounce something and sound like a rookie, even though I am. And uh, <laughs> we all are. <laughs> is there a way to find out the pronunciations of things, especially if they're foreign? Um, you, I usually can look, I usually look them up under Google, how, you know, how in some cases, sometimes as you see, when we're doing these trainings, it does put in parentheses, how to say it. And thankfully we got a lot of amazing agents on here that also help, you know, cause I say I'm not the best with pronunciations. So, um, you know, like, like Chugach, okay. It may be Chugach or whatever. I don't know. Luckily, my boyfriend's usually really good at pronunciation, too, so he always corrects me. Um, but, yeah, I usually would Google it, and then it should, you know, how do you say Gujarat National Park or whatever. So Thank you. You're welcome. So that's kind of how we do it. But, again, a lot of time when we do these trainings, a lot of times it's in um, uh, parentheses, too, or people will put in there, it's pronounced this way, you know, because that's what's cool about doing this as a group, guys. Also, people have lived in Alaska or people have lived in, you know, Saudi Arabia or whatever, and they're able to help assist with, with wordings and, and what to actually see and do there and stuff. So that's why it's kind of good to do these groups together because you learn so much and you get to meet other fellow business partners. So, so thank you guys for joining us. And we will go on. All right. The city itself is live in arts and countless, um, uh, live <clears throat> with arts and culture flourishing year round with world class entertainment, sporting events, countless festivals, and lively local arts and music scene. Getting around town is easy. Downtown is pedestrian friendly, and walking maps are available at the Log Cabin Information Center. On 4th Avenue, interpretive kiosks are scattered throughout the city center, depicting the city's colorful historical past. The location, Anchorage, is located in the south central uh, region of Alaska, 358 miles south of Fairbanks, 60 miles north of Whittier, 127 miles north of Seward, about a three-hour flight from Seattle. Access during peak season, Anchorage welcomes more than 150 domestic international flights daily. Uh, two major highways depart from Anchorage. The Glen Highway, National Scenic Byway, runs 50 miles north towards the Matsu, again, a different valley, and the Seward Highway, an all-American road, travels through 
um, south, 127 miles to Seward. The city can be reached from anywhere in North America via the road system. The Alaska Railway Road departs from Anchorage to Fairbanks, Seward, and Whittier. Accommodations and amenities, okay? Anchorage has a wide variety of accommodation, dining, and shopping options. It is recommended to book as far in advance as possible during peak season, June through August. The attractions, these are things to maybe screenshot or something to, to save. So when you post your certificate, you can say, look, guys, you can see these are magical uh, botanical gardens, you know, and stuff like that. So you have Alaska Aviation Heritage Museum, rare aircraft, bush plane, Alaska Pioneer and military exhibits. You have the Alaska Botanical Garden, 110 acre garden featuring Alaska's native plants, Alaska mint, northernmost mint in the United States, Alaska Native Heritage Center, artists, storytellers, performers, interpretive displays, and traditional village exhibits featuring the five main uh, Alaska Native groups. Alaska Law Enforcement Museum displays and artifacts featuring the history of law enforcement in Alaska. You have the Alaska Zoo uh, featuring um, Alaska animals, some exotic animals, children programs, and special encounter programs. Uh, Anchorage Market, some weekends fair and large selection of Alaska grown produce, seafood, Alaska made gifts, crafts, clothing, and local entertainment. Anchorage Museum, world-class museum featuring Alaska's history, culture, guided tours, and native arts and art, uh, artifacts. Uh, gold rush history and actual selection of Alaska pipeline. Chugach uh, State Park, Alpine Park, lying mostly within the city limits, featuring miles of hiking trails, many just off the Seward Highway. Earthquake Park, near the Ted Stevens International Airport and on the Tony Knowles Coastal Trail, remembers and explains the 1964 earthquake. Kincaid Park, viewpoints, hiking, skiing, biking trails, Log Cabin Visitor Information Center, home of Visit Anchorage, the Anchorage Convention Visitors Bureau, offering a wealth of information to Anchorage visitors on the corner of 4th and F Street. Uh, Lake Hood, Lake Spinard, Seaplane, Floatplain Base. Largest, busiest floatplain base in the world. Remote camping, fishing sites, camping in lodges, and flight seeing are assessed from here. Potter Marsh, boardwalk 10 miles south of downtown Anchorage, where up to 130 species of waterfowl can be seen throughout the year, spawning salmon visible during season. Tony Knowles Coastal Trail, 11 mile national recreational trail, paved trails in Anchorage, uh, paved with uh, downtown Anchorage um, past Earthquake Park along Turn again, arm to Kincaid Park with views across Cook Inlet to Den Denali. Uh, great for biking, running, walking, and cross country skiing in the winter. Now we're talking about Eagle River, located 13 miles north of Anchorage. Eagle River is a scenic community, great for summer and winter activities. Open year round, Eagle River Nature Center, located 12 miles into the Eagle River Valley offers workshops, guided hikes, as well as bird and wildlife viewing. Both nature trails and long distance treks are available into the uh, Chugach State Park from here. For more information on year round activities, visit the Division of Parks and Outdoor Recreation website. Um, Eklutna, uh, an Athabascan uh, village about 25 miles north of Anchorage is not open to visitors but the Eklutna Historical Park at the same exit off the Glen Highway welcomes visitors to see the colorful spirit houses and tour the two small churches in the park. St. Nicholas Orthodox Church, built in the late 1860s, is one of the oldest buildings in South Central Alaska. Uh, again, in, and when I mispronounce, I always say it twice because so you can see how much I screw up. <laughs> Good word, Aliska, Aliaska. Off the turn again, our 50 minutes south of Anchorage, the community of Girdwood is a year round destination home to Crow Creek Mine and Crow Pass Trail, a portion of the trail that took gold prospectors to the gold fields of interior Alaska in the early 1900s. 
Alaska uh, Ski Resort, the only three diamond, three triple uh, A four diamond hotel in Alaska. It is also located in Goodwood. <clears throat> Largest ski area in Alaska offers up to 150 days of alpine skiing uh, with more than 2,500 feet and more than 1,000 AC. Um, Alaska offers uh, runs for all ability levels with an annual snowfall of between 700 and 1,000 inches. Mountain is typically open November through April. A uh, 60 passenger tram with skiers to the 2300 foot level in minutes. Some skiers choose the Hellesky, um, Hellesky option. In summer, the tram is open to sightseers and hikers alike. Hike to the top of the mountain and you can um, have earned a free ride down. Uh, the location, uh, um, Alaska Goodward is located just off Turnigan Arm, 40 miles southeast of Anchorage. You can get there by road via the Seward Highway or Alaska Railroad. They do have one resort, numerous condos, chalets, and B&Bs, variety of restaurants, cafes, and mercantile are also located in Goodward. Attractions, you have the ski resort, which runs for all ability levels, summer hiking, year-round 60 passenger tram. Crow Creek Mine, now a visitor attraction where clients can pan for gold. It was a working mine until 1940. Hiking trails, so numerous hiking trails include uh, Crow Pass, Winter, Winter Creek, and Alaska, and more. Uh, Portage. While the community of Portage once existed as a flag stop for Alaska Railroad, it was flooded as a result of the 1964 earthquake and the 50 to 100 residents moved elsewhere. Today, people visit the area to camp, fish, hike, and, and in winter ski. There is year-round access to Portage Glacier and via the Anton Anderson Memorial Tunnel uh, to Whittier and Prince William Sound. So the attractions, Begich, Boggs, Visitor Center, and Portage Glacier. One of the most visited attractions in the state, the center is named for Alaska Congressman, Congressman Nick Begich and former U.S. House Majority Leader Hale Boggs, and features displays and exhibits exploring the natural history, flora, fauna, and geology of the area. A film, Retreat and Renewal, Stories from Alaska's Chugach National Forest, plays hourly. Uh, your clients may want to experience the walking trails and viewpoints of the 800 feet deep Portage Lake. To see Portage Glacier, they can take the private tour boat featuring a Forest Service interpreter, which cruises several times each day to the face of the glacier. Um, other glaciers are accessible by trail. Camping is available nearby. Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center. I'm this sorry. I'm just curious, um, real quick. Um, we can read through this on our own. Could we get like some training on how to access these travel sites like on our own? Because we can always do this in our, you know, in our free time. Correct. Yeah. And that's what this is. This is you can go into any of these. So you don't have to stay here with us. That's it's a um I actually, this is just something that we do as a group. Again, if you're interested in doing it with us, but if you wanna do it on your own, be my guest. Um, all you do is you can, just like we do, we do a research, different vendors like um, Israel, like Hawaii, and you can go in and get your own certificates. People do that all the time. So um, now as far as which certificates, you can go into your back office under our vendors. You can just go in and do um, here in my um, program here um, under featured. Um, we actually have a, a spreadsheet with some of the trainings um, that offer these. So it's right here on this spreadsheet. And so right here, Travel Access Academy or Travel Agent University, Travel Agent Academy, TBO Academy. You can go into those and do your own training. And, is, and I can find you, uh, I can find all that through your Facebook? Um, no, this is on our certificate uh, recording group. And I can go ahead and um, share it in the chat now for you. 
Thank you so much. I wasn't trying to be rude. I was just curious. That's okay. No worries. Um, but yeah, um, you know, and and again, like Disney and Princess, you know, six, seven hours, some of them are very, very difficult. So it's nice when you do it as a group because we help each other with the tests. Some of the tests can be very difficult. So just keep that in mind. Um, Thank you but so yeah, much, Marie. You're welcome. No worries. Have a good day. Um, okay, so let me go back to where we were. Okay. Sorry, guys. Here we are. Ba, ba, ba. Okay. Um, so Alaska Wildlife Conservation drive through Wild Animal Park near Portage and turn off to the wounded and abandoned animals otherwise unable to survive in the wild. Here animals including muskox, caribou, bison, grizzly, and black bear, moose, and bird prey are rehabilitated and cared for. That'd be kind of cool to go see, right? All right, Chugach National Forest, um, second largest national forest in the country and an impressive area of forests, rivers, lakes, mountains, and glaciers. Roughly the size of New Hampshire and the uh, Chugach uh, features a geographic diversity that is truly unique among national forests. The 5.9 million acre um, forest is home to plentiful wildlife, especially for those who make the effort a hike away from the roads and highways. Black um, and brown bear inhabit most of the forest. Uh, record size moose live in the region and dull sheep can be seen on the mountainside. Uh, more than 214 species of resident and migratory birds occupy the Chugach uh, National Forest. Seabirds such as black leg kittiwaks, uh, Patargan, bald eagles, stellar jays are frequently viewed by visitors. The Chugach is one of the few places left in the world where glaciers spill out on the mountains and into the seas. When combined with the Bagley ice field um, from which it originates, uh, Bering Glacier is larger than Switzerland. Uh, Columbia Glacier is one of the largest tidewater glaciers in the world while Portage Glacier and the Begich uh, Boggs Visitor Center is one of the most popular stops for visitors in Alaska. All right, next. So Copper Valley, um, Copper River Valley and Wrangell St. Elias National Park Reserve. Um, <clears throat> at 13.2 million acres, it is the largest park in the national park system. It's located 180 miles northwest of Anchorage, 250 miles south of uh, Fairbanks, and 150 miles north of Valdez. Two major highways, the Richardson and the Glen, access the uh, Copper River Valley. The valley is surrounded by four mountain ranges, the Wrangell St. Elias Mountains to the east, the Alaska Range to the north, and the Chugach to the south, and the Talkeetnas to the west. The Wrangell Mountain Range has nine of the 20 highest peaks in North America. Copper River Valley has been home to the indigenous people of the area, the Atna, for generations. They speak an Athabascan um, language and practice a subsistence lifestyle harvesting caribou, moose, and fish. The area's history is also rich in mining and agriculture. Uh, because this area is on the road system, your clients who choose to drive um, will visit the Copper River Valley as they are traveling between Fairbanks and Valdez on the scenic Richardson Highway or as part of the Copper Valley Circle Tour. Leaving Anchorage to travel to Whittier Ferry to Valdez, drive north to Glen Allen, then west on Glen Highway to the Matsu Valley area, then back to Anchorage. Campers and RVers are well accommodated with private and public camping and recreation areas. Other overnight options in the area include bed and breakfast, small mo local motels and roadhouses, fishing lodges, as well as larger um, lodge, which overlooks the valley and come and accommodate larger groups and package tour travelers. Visitors come to the Copper River Valley for the spectacular scenery and activities. Many have heard about the tasty Copper River Reds, the premium sockeye salmon that come from the area. Rivers, glaciers, and mountains play a big part in every visit to the Copper River Valley, whether fishing, flight seeing, rafting, hiking, or simply appreciating their visit. In addition, visitors come through the Copper River Valley on their way to McCarthy and Kennecott. Located 93 miles off the Richardson Highway, there are the only towns within Wrangell St. Elias National Park and Preserve. Today, a variety of services are provided in the region from private enterprises providing guiding, transportation, lodging, and supplies to government agencies such as the National Park Service and the Bureau of Land Management. 
Chitina, an old mining town. Chitina is the gateway to Wrangell uh, St. Elias National Park and Preserve and the mining towns of McCarthy and Kennecott. Here begins a 60 mile gravel McCarthy Road. Many of the buildings in Chitina are deserted, but there is an arts and crafts center, visitor information, and historic hotel. Um, Chitina is located at 34, um, at mile 34 of Edgerton Highway on the west bank of the Copper River at the confluence of the Chitina River. It is 52 miles southeast of Copper Center and 66 miles southeast of Glen Allen. Uh, by road via the Edgerton Highway off the road, River Richardson Highway, or by air taxi. Accommodations and amenities, Chitina hosts a convenience store, uh, cafe, gift shops, hotels, camping, uh, telephone, airport saloon, liquor store, tire repair, and the last gas station restroom before 60 mile road to McCarthy. Copper Center, located 14 miles south of Glen Allen on the Richardson Highway. Copper Center was established during the Klondike Gold Rush when miners attempted to establish an all-American route to the gold fields. Today is the home of the Ranger Station and Visitor Information Headquarters for Wrangell St. Elias Park Preserve. Look at that big bit, wow. Attractions there, you have Copper Center Lodge, historic roadhouse next to the museum. Uh, the headquarters of the National Park, visitor information, interpretive displays, walking trail, theater, and view of the valley. Gakona, very small highway community, located where the Richardson Highway and Talk Cutoff merge at the confluence of the Copper and Gakona Rivers. Uh, though small in size, Gakona is big on history as well as Angler's Paradise. Gakona uh, began as a wood and fish camp serving the Atma people in the Copper River Basin thousands of years ago, eventually becoming a permanent village. When the discovery of gold brought prospectors to Alaska, roadhouses were built to accommodate travelers along established routes. In 1904, Doyle's Roadhouse was built in Gakona and was a stop, main stop for the Ore Stage Company. The lodge is no longer in use, but it is still standing along with other historical buildings. Uh, the location Gakona is at the confluence of the Copper and Gakona Rivers, 50 miles northeast of Glen Allen. It lies at mile two on the top cutoff to the Glen Highway, just east of Richardson Highway. Um, access, road access from Anchorage, Fairbanks, and the lower 48 via the Glen Talk Cutoff and Richardson Highway. Accommodations and amenities, small variety of accommodations, several restaurants, and other roadside services. Glen Allen, largest community in the area. Glen Allen is a gateway to the Wrangell Mountains and the service center for the Copper Rib Basin, the popular destination for outdoor activities. Location, community of Glen Allen lies along the Glen Highway in its junction with the Richardson Highway, 189 miles east of Anchorage, located just outside the western boundary of Wrangell, St. Elias uh, National Park Preserve. You can get their road access on the Glen Highway from Anchorage or the Richardson Highway from Fairbanks. Air charter services are also available. Glen Allen and surrounding area has a selection of hotels, B&Bs, lodges, cabins, restaurants, and cafes, as well as roadside service. Uh, McCarthy and Kennecott um, is a beautiful area of glaciers and mountains in the heart of the Wrangell St. Elias National Park Preserve. Kennecott River flows on the west coast or west side Kennecott, which lies, um, so Kennecott River flows by on the west side. Kennecott, which lies about five miles up the mountain from McCarthy, is a national historic landmark. The town of Kennecott was built by Kennecott Copper Corporation between 1910 and 1920 at the site of the richest copper mine in the world. An early day misspelling made the mining company Kennecott, while the region, river, and settlements are Kennecott. Since no gambling or drinking were allowed in the town of Kennecott, Nearby McCarthy developed as a colorful diversion for the miners, providing a newspaper, uh, stores, hotels, restaurants, saloons, and a red light district. Kennecott became a company town with homes, a school, hospital, gym, tennis court, and silent movie theater. 
The mine shut down abruptly in 1938 due to economic conditions. Distinctive red mill buildings perched on the side of the mountain were locked up and left as they were. National Park his, uh, Service has restored parts of 14-story mill building and is currently restoring some of the other buildings. A handful are open for guided tours. Today, McCarthy is a small, quaint town with a rustic feel. Summer brings backpackers, glacier trekkers, and mountain bikers, as well as visitors on sightseeing trips and day trips into the park and small package group tours. Few rental car companies allow their cars can be um, taken on the road, um, on the gravel, 60 miles um, McCarthy Road. Your clients may wish to leave the transportation to a local uh, shuttle bus driver or taxi, um, air taxi pilot. McCarthy lies 60 miles east of Chitina off the Edgerton Highway. It is on the Kennecott River of the mouth of the McCarthy Creek. Kennecott is five miles up the mountain from McCarthy. You can get there by road from the Richardson Highway Junction via Edgerton Highway paved and McCarthy Road unpaved to road end. Then across the Kennecott River via pedestrian bridge. Air service available from Gokana, Chitina, and Anchorage. Bus service from Valdez and Glen Allen. Shuttle service between, um, available between McCarthy and Kennecott. Uh, they have small selection of lodges, B&Bs, restaurants, saloon, espresso bar, convenience grocery, and deli. They have the Copper Mill, abandoned 14-story concentration mill where copper mine from the Kennecott uh, Copper Miner mine was processed before it was sent down to Cordova via the Copper River and Northwestern Railway, now defunct. You have the Visitor Center, um, historic site, depot building. McCarthy Kennecott Historical Museum, uh, historical photographs and local artifacts. Wrangell St. Elias Preserve um, encompasses towering mountains, massive glaciers, powerful rivers, abundant wildlife, covering over 13 million acres. Wrangell St. Elias is the largest park in the U.S. National Park System, part of the largest protected ecosystem on the planet. It equals the area of six Yellowstone National Parks with four major mountain ranges that include nine of the 16 highest peaks in the United States. Mount uh, St. Elias standing at the 18,000 um, foot is the second highest peak in the US, first being Denali in interior Alaska. Wrangell St. Elias National Park was proclaimed a national monument in 1978, it could be a test question, World Heritage Site in 1979, and in 1980, sorry guys, I'm trying to stretch my leg, um, it was established as a national park and preserve. There are no entrance fees to the park, which is nice. For more information, opportunities visiting the park, check out these websites. Um, access there, the nearest major airport is located in Anchorage, approximately five hour drive on the Glen Highway to Park Headquarters, located between Glen Allen and Copper Center. Park Headquarters also can be reached from Fairbanks and Valdez via the Richardson Highway. Two unpaved road, roads provide access to the massive park, 42 mile Nabesna. Road reaches the northern portion of the park and the 60 mile McCarthy Road leads directly into the heart of the park. Uh, local air taxi flight scene tours leave the airstrips in Glen Allen, McCarthy and Chitina. Uh, accommodations, public use cabins are available and there is a private fly-in lodge as well as other accommodations in McCarthy and Kennecott. Uh, you have the park communities, McCarthy and Kennecott, the copper mine, historic copper mine in the world, the historic site of the richest, richest copper mine. Okay, that's Kennecott. And nature, mountains, rivers, vistas, wildlife, um, and wilderness. All right, Kenai Peninsula, often referred to as Alaska's playground. The Kenai Peninsula offers some of the most accessible wilderness activities and attractions in the state made up 25,600 square miles of mountains, valleys, fjords, lakes, rivers, and ice fields including Kenai Fjords National Park and the National Wildlife Refuge. Um, surrounded by Cook Inlet to the west and the Pacific Ocean to the south, this is prime destination for any of your clients wishing for a combination of outdoor recreational activities and unique communities. Anchor Point and Ninalshik, uh, located on the Sterling Highway between Kenai and Homer, Anchor Point is the westernmost highway point 
in North America. It was named by Captain Cook in 1787 while exploring the area. He lost an anchor to the strong tidal currents. This is one of the premier fly fishing spots on the peninsula. Campgrounds in the area provide opportunities to enjoy the coastal scenery. Ninalchik offers impressive views of Mount Ribdaut and Mount um, Iliamni, Iliamna, uh, located across the Cook Inlet. A colorful fishing fleet and a Russian Orthodox church complete Nilichik scenery. Opportunities for salmon or halibut fishing, as well as clamming, are available on easily accessible beaches. The Nilichik uh, fairgrounds are the site of the annual Kenai Peninsula State Fair held in August. Uh, Cooper Landing, located on the upper Kenai River in the heart of the Kenai Mountains, Cooper Landing is often called the gem of the Kenai Peninsula because it combines dramatic uh, mountain scenery with excellent fishing and rafting opportunities on the world famous Kenai River. There are many visitors, services, and accommodations available in the community, including historic uh, roadhouse campground, lodges, cabins, and B&Bs. Uh, Copper Landing is located on the Sterling Highway, just nine miles from the intersection um, with the Seward Highway. Homer is often called the halibut fishing capital of the world. It is also known as the place where the road ends and the sea begins. Located at the southern tip of the Sterling Highway, the community was founded by the famous 4.5 mile spit on um, Kachamak Bay in 1896 by a gold miner, uh, Homer Pennock. Fishermen and homesteaders arrived in the 1920s. Access was improved with the construction of the Sterling Highway um, in the 1950s. Since then, people have been attracted to the beauty of Homer's um, setting, the mild climate, the good fishing, and now to the growing art and retirement community. Inspired potters, sculptors, painters, and jewelers practice their craft and sell their goods in local shops and galleries. It is located north shore of the Ketchumac Bay and on the southwestern edge of Kenai Peninsula. The Homer Spit, a 4.5 mile long bar of gravel, extends from the Homer shoreline and is the center of activity for the town. It is 227 miles south of Anchorage via the Seward and Sterling Highway. You can get there by Charter Air, Alaska State Ferry, or Sterling Highway. Wide variety of lodging, restaurants, and shops are available. You have the Ocean Islands Ocean Visitor Center, interpretive education research facility, exhibits and trails, headquarters for Alaska Maritime National Wildlife Refuge, and Kachamak Bay Research uh, Reserve. Art galleries featuring world work from local artists. Some have workshops and opportunities to meet with artists. Uh, public park and beach watch it, walks, so that's Bishop's Beach, Center for Alaska Coastal Studies, nonprofit educational organizational programs on local marine and coastal ecosystems, Fox River Flats, critical habitat area, access via a steep switchback trail leading down to the flats, gateway to Kodiak Island and McNeil River State Game Sanctuary on the west side of Cook Inlet and Katmai National Park, both known for brown bear viewing and both accessible by float plane. Halibut Cove, a private community across Ketchumup Bay and accessible by ferry or water taxi, welcomes visitors between early afternoon and evening hours for dinner to stroll the boardwalk and visit the galleries. Overnight guests are welcomed at several exclusive inns. Uh, the uh, Ketchumac Bay State Park, one of the most popular parks in sea kayaking, hiking, fishing, and beachcombing in Alaska, accessible by float plane or private water taxi. Prop Museum, National History, located local history and art, remote cameras to Goal Island, and a forested sculpture garden. The Nat <coughs> Nature Center on ha um, East Skyline Drive. Interpretive walk featuring wildlife meadows, medicinal and native uses of plants and beautiful vistas. Hope, the first community heading south onto the Kenai Peninsula on the Seward Highway. Hope is at the end of the 17 mile Hope Cutoff Road, 88 miles from Anchorage. It was the first uh, gold rush town in Alaska built in response to an 1889 find of gold nuggets in Resurrection Creek. Gold was also discovered in nearby Six Mile Creek and the community of Sunrise City. Came to be with um, came to be with a total population of about three thousand people between the two communities. 
Uh, Gold Rush buildings still line the main streets of Hope. The green and white store opened in 1896 and the social hall built in 1902 are still in use today. In addition to the 200 residents now living in Hope, people visit the area to camp, hike, fish, pan for gold, wrap Six Mile Creek and enjoy the scenic beauty of the surrounding wilderness. Kenai, situated on a low rise overlooking the mouth of the Kenai River where it empties into Cook Inlet. Kenai is the largest city on the Kenai Peninsula. The area has been home to Dananini Athabascan people for many generations. The Russians established Fort Nicholas nearby in 1791 at the mouth of the Kenai River on a bluff overlooking Cook Inlet. Uh, when oil was discovered um, in the 1950s, an economic boom soon followed, which grew the population and further established the city of Kenai as the largest on the peninsula. Kenai River is the lifeblood of the peninsula and it runs right through Kenai. Today, anglers from around the globe are lured to the river's uh, world-class fishery and many enjoy the services and additional activities and attractions of the area. Uh, location, Kenai is located on the western coast of the Kenai Peninsula and shares a boundary uh, with the Kenai National Ref Wildlife Refuge. Kenai is approximately 65 air miles and 155 road miles south west of Anchorage via the Sterling Highway. Uh, scheduled commercial service, air taxi, air charter services. They have road access from Anchorage via the Seward, Sterling, Kenai Spur Highways. Variety of lodging, restaurants, and shops are available. Attractions there, you have the uh, Holy Assumption Russian Orthodox Church built in 1895, a national historic landmark. Kenai Visitor and Cultural Center, uh, visitor information, free museum, wildlife exhibits, Russian, Alaska, indigenous historical artifacts, Old Town Kenai walking tour maps. Kenai River, more than 20 public access points along 80 miles of river, known for trophy king salmon, also red salmon, rainbow trout, Dolly Varden, very busy July through August, river rafting opportunities. The Old Town Kenai, some of the oldest, most historic buildings in Kenai. Churches, homesteader, log cabins, and a replica of the original Fort Kenai. Walking tour maps are available. Kenai Fjords National Park, a 601, 839 acre glaciated paradise lying at the foot of Seward. Snow and ice cover 60% of the park and crowning it is 936 square miles, um, Harding Ice Field. One of only four remaining ice fields in the US from the massive ice, um, ice field, countless tideway glaciers pour down, carving valleys that fill with seawater to form the stunning fjords that the park is named after and then decorating them with icebergs the size of small houses. Uh, with such a landscape with abundance and wildlife, um, the park has become a major tourist attraction. As far as visitors are concerned, Kenai Fjords has three main areas. Exit Glacier, Harding Ice Field, and the rugged coastline with the beautiful Tidewater Glaciers. The easiest to reach is the road accessible Exit Glacier, which explains why it's the park's most popular attraction, easily drawing more than 100,000 visitors each summer. Hardier souls can ascend to views of the Harding Ice Field from a trail at Exit Glacier and experienced mountaineers equipped with skis, ice axes, and crampons can continue on to explore the largest ice field that lies entirely within U.S. borders. Access. The park lies 130 miles south of Anchorage on the Seaward Highway. Alaska Railway serves uh, Seward from Anchorage during the summer months, and Alaska Marine Highway System provides year-round service. Accommodations, public use cabins are available along the coast in the summer and at Exit Glacier in the winter. Restaurants and lodging are available in the Gateway community of Seward. Attractions, Exit Glacier Nature Center, interpretive information, can, can I Fjords National Park Visitor Information Center, interpretive and visitor information. Natural attractions, activities, including wildlife, glaciers, bird scenery, hiking, day cruises, fishing, and kayaking. Kenai National Wildlife Refuge makes up the most of the west side of the Kenai Peninsula. Two million acres of lakes, rivers, trails, or hikes, routes for canoeing, and few people. Equipment is available through local guides and outfitters. Headquarters is located in Soldotna. Seldovia. A lovely, quiet community of about 300 residents on the south side of Ketchumak Bay. 
Sedolia is accessible by ferry or air taxi from Homer. Beautiful setting, fishing, mountain biking, camping, hiking, beautiful St. Nicholas Russian Orthodox. Uh, church attracts visitors. Seward, known as the gateway to the Kenai Fjords National Park, Seward is the picturesque community located on the shores of the Resurrection Bay at the foot of 3000 Mount Marathon. Seward was founded by Russian Governor Baranov in the late 1700s. Prospectors um, passed through on their way to gold near sunrise and hope in the late 1800s. Ida Tarad Trail linked Seward to Nome in 1907 and completion of the Alaska Railroad in 1920s facilitated travel between Seward and Fairbanks. Summers are the busiest season. Many visitors complete or begin the cruises across the Gulf of Mexico and on to the inside passage from Seward. Most visitors travel to Seward by train or motor coach. Other visitors drive themselves to or from Seward to explore the community of Kenai Fjords National Park with one of several tour boat companies. Others arrive to fish Resurrection Bay to hike, exit Glacier, or to drive their RV along the shore of Resurrection Bay. Uh, Seward is situated on Resurrection Bay of the east coast of the Kenai Peninsula, 125 miles south of Anchorage on the Seward Highway, lies on foot on the Mount um, Marathon, and is the gateway to Kenai Fjords National Park. Road access via the Seward Highway, scheduled bus or Alaska Railway, um, service from Anchorage, Alaska Marine Highway from Kodiak, Homer, Cordova, and Valdez. Um, variety of accommodations, restaurants and shops available, attractions, you have the Alaska Sea Life, a center for research, rehabilitation, public education, view sea lions, harbor seals, and seabirds above, below water, learn about the intertidal marine life, and experience a touch tank appropriate for all ages. Exit Glacier, accessible by road 13 miles out of Seward. Harding Ice Field in 3.3 to 4 hour strenuous hike from the glacier. Uh, Kenai Fjords National Park, home to the marine wildlife, uh, birds and mammals, whales, porpoises, sea lions, sea, seals, sea otters, tidewater glaciers, protected coves, and scenic rugged coasts. Fishing, sailing, kayaking, camping. Whew, this is a long one, huh? Uh, Resurrection Bay, year-round ice-free port teeming sea life and recreation opportunities. Sedultna serves as a central hub of the Kenai Peninsula for fishing and outdoor uh, recreation. It is home to world record king salmon. Caught in 1985, weighing 97 pounds, four ounces. The name Sedultna may come from the Athabascan word meaning the stream fork or from the Russian word soldier. The community's namesake is Sedultna um, Creek, which flows in the world famous Kenai River, winding around the, the town with the majestic view of the volcanic mountains across uh, Cook Inlet. Together, Sedultna and Kenai are referred to as the twin cities. What are the twin cities? Sedultna and Kenai. Um, of the Kenai Peninsula and share an integrated economy. It is located, uh, Sultna is located on the Kenai Peninsula, 150 miles south of Anchorage at the junction of Sterling and Kenai Spur Highways. It lies 10 miles inland from Cook Inlet and borders the Kenai River. You can get road access from Anchorage via the Seward and Sterling Highways, scheduled bus service and scheduled air taxi. Variety of lodging, restaurants, and shops are available. Attractions, you have the Kenai Flats, which is bird viewing. Kenai National Wildlife Refuge, wildlife displays, movies, and nat nature trail. The River Walk, down the stairway from the Sedultna Visitor Information Center along the Kenai River is a 250-foot walkway, fishing, picnicking, and watching the river. The Historical uh, Museum and Historic Village collection of cabins with pioneer artifacts and photos. And then the Information Center, wildlife display, classic fish walk along the Kenai River, information and assistance. Wow. This is a very long one, guys, huh? Okay. All right, so Matsuna. Matanuska and Susista River Valleys, Matsu Valley. 
uh, locally known as Batsu, large as the state of West Virginia and bordered by Anchorage, the Copper River Valley and Denali National Park Preserve. It is recognized as a jumping off point for visitors to the Denali National Park and Preserve, flight seeing mountain climbing and spectacular views of the Great One or the High One. Um, the area was originally settled by families who came from the Midwest region of the uh, United States as part of the New Deal Relief Program in 1935. Because of the fertile uh, farmland and the immense amount of summer sunlight, vegetables grow to an incredible sizes. Alaska record cabbage was 127 pounds. Wow. Hatcher Pass in the Independence um, Mine State Historical Park. Uh, Hatcher Pass in the Independence Mine State Historic Park are located on the 50 mile scenic Hatcher Pass Loop drive between the George Park and Glen Highways. Located only an hour north of Anchorage and Park has an inter interpreter, interpretive center, as well as abandoned buildings and equipment in the old gold mines open for exploration. The scenic beauty of the area and its alpine vistas welcome hikers, mountain bikers, campers, and backpackers in the summer and snowmobile riders and skiers in the winter. Montanuska Glacier, located just off the Glen Highway, 50 miles east of Palmer, accessible from highway. River of Ice ranges between two to four miles wide and 27 miles long. The Montanuska Glacier rest area of the Glen Highway provide an excellent viewing area. And there's also interesting interpreter, interpretive um, trail. Uh, lodges and camping facilities are available in the area. Palmer, home of the Alaska State Fair. Okay, that may be a test question. Located near the mouth of the Montanuska River, where it flows into Nick Arm. Uh, the area was settled uh, by homesteaders early in the 20th century, but its biggest boost came in 1935 when 200 families arrived to populate the Montanuska Valley Colony, a farm settlement program under the New Deal. The town has many restaurants and businesses catering to residents and visitors alike. A small but vital agricultural region, the lower Montanuska Valley is wide and flat, which so rich with rich soil and moderate weather. Most of the famous giant Alaskan produce is grown here, thanks to the months of seemingly unending daylight. These large vegetables are shown off along much of um, with much more at the Alaska State Fair every year in August. And it's the fair August, okay? Palmer is located at the center of the Montanuska Valley, 42 miles northeast of Anchorage on the Glen Highway. You can get there um, from Anchorage on the Glen Highway, bus service from Anchorage and talk. Uh, camping RV facilities, hotels, motels, B&Bs, as well as lodges and chalets. Many restaurants and shops are also found at Palmer. You have the glaciers, the Nick Glacier, 25 miles long, accessible by air or jet boat. The Montanuska Glacier is 27 miles long, accessible by car, hike, or climb with the guide. Matsu Visitor Center, located off the park's highway near the junction of the Glen Highway, offers a view of the valley and visitor information. Musk Ox Farm Museum and Gift Shop. Open summers for tours as commercial farm raises musk oxen for breeding, research, and harvesting. Caveat uh, youth, like right there, trying to say it still. Soft down under wool of the musk ox. Palmer Visitor Center. Visitor information, the uh, photogenic vegetable and flower garden. And how about the reindeer farm? See reindeer, moose, and elk up close. Uh, Takitna is located at the end of the 14 mile spur road of the Parks Highway and offers breathtaking views of Denali and Alaska Range and the Broad Valley, where the Chalitna, Susisna, and Talkitna rivers meet. Takitna is listed in the National Register of the Historic Places and boasts a highly creative cit citizenry. Original saloons and roadhouses are still in operation, imagine and imaginative shops and businesses in renovated trapper and minor cabins. Uh, Talkeetna also offers a mystique of the mountain climbing community. It is staging area for approximately 1,000 climbers each year who attempt to reach the summit of Denali, which weather permit permitting can be seen from local lodges, viewpoints on the road into town, 
Flight SIG provides a wonderful opportunity for any visitor in this um, to this area to experience Denali up close and personal. Glacier landings are a popular option, as is a visit to the Kahiltna Base Camp to see climbers begin their ascent. The area also features wonderful river experiences and forest adventures. Taquitna is located 115 miles north of Anchorage off the Parks Highway on the Taquitna Spur Road. The paved spur road runs 14 miles from the highway to Taquitna. Road access via the Parks Highway from Anchorage, daily railroad service in summer, air, taxi, custom, and package tours. Shuttle service from Anchorage. They have a variety of accommodations, shops, and restaurants are available. The attractions there, you have Mountaineering Center Ranger Station, check in for mountain climbing teams, features dramatic photographs of the tallest mountains in North America. Talkeetna Historical Society Museum, originally a one-room schoolhouse built in 1936, features a scale model of Denali, presents the Gold Rush and Railroad history of the area. Trapper Creek. While the um, area has been home to the Denaina Athabascans for generations, the community of Trapper Creek came to be in the late 1950s, early 1960s. The 59ers, a group of settlers from Detroit, Michigan, moved to Taquitna and then on to Trapper Creek to find homesteads. They lived in trailers and tents before building log cabins. Serving as the Southern Gateway to Denali National Park and Preserve, Trapper Creek offers a, a year-round uh, lodging, dining services, and a museum. From Trapper Creek runs the rugged Petersville Road leading back into Petersville Recreation Mining Area. Very popular for snowmobiles in the winter and four-wheelers in the summer. You can make arrangements for your clients to experience either uh, season's activities through local tour operators. There are overnight accommodations year-round and camping available during the summer months. Uh, Trapper Creek likes be, um, miles uh, between 107 and 133 of the Parks Highway. It lies about 17 miles north of the Talkeetna Spur Road, west of the junction of Chilitna, Susista, and Takeetna. You can get there by road on the Parks Highway, 125 miles north from Anchorage, 265 from Fairbanks. Variety of accommodations, shops and restaurants. You've got Cache Creek Goldfield hiking and four-wheeling destination, interesting topography. Petersville Road gravel extending nearly 40 miles from Trapper Creek into the Dutch Hills. Trapper Creek Museum, an original 59ers log cabin now housing a collection of artifacts, stories, and photos of people and lifestyle of the early settlers in this area. And now Wasilla. Uh, really begins the history of Nick, the first boom town of Matsu Valley. The town served as early trappers and miners working in the gold fields at Cache and Willow Creeks. Wasilla was established in 1917 with the construction of Alaska Railroad. Today, Wasilla is the largest community of the parks highway between Anchorage and Fairbanks and the fastest growing. Much of the town's commercial enterprises stretch up and down the highway and are bordered by the mountains of Talkeetna and Chugach ranges. Lake Lucille and Lake Wasia are prominent, popular, and nearby offering many recreational opportunities. The official start of the um, Edetrod uh, Trail sled dog race takes place in Wasia each year, the first Sunday in March, weather and snow permitting. Uh, it's located midway between uh, Matanuska and Susista Valleys on the Parks Highway, 43 miles north of Anchorage. You can get there by vehicle via the Parks Highway, Air Charter, Alaska Railroad, and scheduled bus service from Anchorage. They have a variety of accommodations, shops, and restaurants. Attractions, you have Big Lake, popular destination for boating and fishing, Dorothy Page Museum, a collection of early buildings and pioneer mining history, artifacts, Iterod Trail Ray, Dog Race headquarters open in the summer, featuring trophies, displays, and photos of the race and guests can meet dog, sled dogs who have run the um, Iditarod Trail. Nick Museum and, dog, and Sled Dog Mushers Hall of Fame, located 14 miles outside Wasilla, are two buildings from the original Nick Town site. Uh, once a pool hall and roadhouse, it now houses a museum on the second floor with numerous artifacts and displays from this area's early years. Uh, museum of Alaska Transportation History features machines, con contraptions, historical vehicles, including tractors, snowmobiles, and trucks, 
many restored to working order, and there are 500 miles of rivers designated as exceptional recreation and fishing rivers. And last one, oh, uh, Prince William Sound encompasses 10,000 square miles of protected waterways, islands, bajords, as well as 10,000 glaciers, 3,500 miles of coastline, whales, porpoise, sea otters, sea lions, seals call the numerous narrow fjords home. Bear, deer, goats, and sheep inhabit the mainlands. Um, Hold on, I'm so sorry. One moment. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the communities of Whittier and Valdez provide access from the road system to the waters of Prince William Sound. Visitors can access Prince William Sound. Um, sorry. Okay. Um, via day cruises, charter boats, flight sing tours, and state ferry. Um, your clients might consider traveling through this part of South Central on a popular circle itinerary found in sample itineraries here at TravelAska.com. Cruise ships, ferries, day boats, yachts, sailboats, fishing, charters, and kayaks, as well as commercial vessels all of all sizes ply the rich waters of the Sound. One of the most famous attractions of Prince William Sound is Columbia Glacier, which is four miles wide and over 200 feet high at its base. It is the second largest glacier in Alaska, and at more than 400 miles square miles, it is about the size of the state of Rhode Island. Cordova, fishing town located between Orca Inlet and Lake Yacht on the east coast of Prince William Sound, originally the port community. Um, for Kennecott Copper Mine. It became a fishing town when the mine closed in 1938. Um, the working community has been shaped into a dramatic natural setting, rich culture, heritage, and vibrant residents. The town's economy is centered um, on its fishing fleet and fish processing plants. Some canneries offer tours while they are operating. Cordova is located on the southeastern end of the Prince uh, William Sound in the Gulf of Alaska. Community was built on Orca Inlet um, at the base of Yak Mountain. It lies 52 miles southeast of Valdez and 150 miles southeast of Anchorage. Scheduled daily jet service from Anchorage in Seattle via Juneau, 45 minutes from Anchorage, and state ferry service from uh, road accessible Valdez and Whittier. Charter aircraft service also available. There is no road access to Cordova. Several hotels, motels, restaurants, and shops are available. Uh, things to see, you have Child's Glacier, known for impressive shows of calving. Copper River Delt, home of the world famous Copper River um, Wild Salmon, 60 mile arc formed by six glacial fed river systems is partially accessible by highway. The Maraud Tidal Marshes, shallow ponds and outwashes are used by millions of birds and waterfowl as staging areas during the spring and fall migrations, as well as nesting areas in the summer. Cordova Museum, small museum which displays the marine life relics of the town's early history in Kennecott Copper Mine, Russian artifacts, and three seat Bedarka kayak made with spruce and seal skins. Mount Eox Ski Area, vintage chairlift, first used in Sun Valley, provides a stunning panorama of Cordova, Prince William Sound, and portion of the Copper River Delta. Alanka Cultural Center displays of indigenous artifacts, full-size totem pole, one of the only five known fully articulated orca skeletons in the world. That's at Alanka Cultural Center. Million Dollar Bridge, engineered marble from the early 1900s, just east of the Child's Glacier. Bridge is accessible today to vehicles due to is inaccessible due to road erosion. Sheridan Glacier, viewed from the bridge over the um, Sheridan River, 15 miles from Cordova, 15 minute walk from the end of the Sheridan Glacier's road. Small Boat Harbor, um, home to the Cordova's fishing vessel fleet, primary salmon, signers, and gill netters. A hub of activity in summer and one of the five largest ice-free harbors in Alaska. 
You have the US Forest Service Ranger District Office. Historic courthouse building, this office features natural wildlife exhibits, including a whale skull, mounted wildlife specimens, information on the area's bird migrations, hiking opportunities, including Crater Lake, Algonet, Slough, um, McKinley Lake, Pipeline Loop, Sheridan Mountains, and Saddlebag Glacier Trails. There is a brochure with a map and milepost listing of trailheads, undeveloped campsites, 14 USFFs, cabins, wildlife viewing areas, and fishing streams. Valdez, situated at the southern end of the Richardson Highway in a majestic fjord where the 5,000 foot tall Chugach Mountains rise from the Prince William Sound. Valdez has welcomed a variety of people throughout its history. Community started during the Klondike Gold Rush when prospectors arrived and attempted to establish an all American route over the Wrangell Mountains to the gold fields. Prior to the construction of the Richardson Highway, Valdez was accessible only by dog sled trail in the winter or overland um, dirt trails in the summer months. Uh, due to its uh, value um, as the northernmost um, ice-free port, Valdez was attracted to the military who established the community as a vital supply um, port during World War II. The town washed away by a tsunami uh, during the 1964 earthquake and was rebuilt four miles east of the original town site. The ice-free um, port brought the Trans-Alaska Pipeline to the town in 1977 and employment in the um, oil terminals and shipping industry. The Exxon Valdez um, oil spill in 1989 brought numerous people to Valdez to help with the cleanup efforts. Today, Valdez is known as a little Switzerland of Alaska and welcomes visitors year round. With winter bringing more than 900 inches of snow each year, uh, Valdez provides an incredible, beautiful escape for skiers and snowboarders and snowmobile riders. As a gateway to the Fjord um, ecosystem of tidal glaciers, rainforests, and marine wildlife, summertime visitors can hike, kayak, cruise, and more from Valdez into the pristine wilderness areas surrounding picturesque community. Highway access to Valdez is via the Richardson Highway, some of the most spectacular roadway in the state. Scenic and winding above the tree line and over 2,678 feet Thompson Pass, alongside glaciers and down through the rock walls and waterfalls of Keynes. Keystone Canyon. Thompson Pass is the snowiest place in Alaska in the winter of 1952 and 53, 19, uh, 974 inches, 81 feet of snow fell from storms blowing off uh, Prince William Sound. Uh, location, Valdez is located on the north shore of Port Valdez, deep water resort in Prince William Sound, lies 305 miles east of Anchorage and 364 um, miles south of Fairbanks. It is the southern terminus of the Richardson Highway and the Trans-Alaska Pipeline. You can get there via Richardson Highway by vehicle, scheduled daily jet service, Anchorage and the Alaska Marine Highway ferry from Cordova, Whittier and Seward. Variety of accommodations, restaurants and shops are available. You have the Alaska Cultural Center, collection of indigenous art and crafts, uh, mountain animals, Columbia Glacier River of Ice, the size of the city of Los Angeles. This is the second largest glacier in Alaska, one of the most active with frequent calving. <clears throat> Prince William Sound is a marine wilderness, river rafting, Keystone Canyon, small boat harbor, boardwalk docks, fishing fleet, Valdez Museum Historic Archive, informative look at the Valdez Pass, reconstructed bar room, historical displays, 1886 fire engine, waterfalls, Keystone Canyon or Sa Solomon Gulch, and then Worthington uh, Glacier State Recreation Site, Thompson Pass, 28 miles outside Valdez, interpretive information walkway. Uh, Whittier, located <clears throat> nestled at the base of the mountains that line Passage Canal, Whittier is the western gateway to Prince William Sound. Thousands of visitors travel through the small port community each summer. 
They are traveling to um, or from glacier cruises, kayaking, surgeon fishing trips, and cruise ships voyages. Your clients will appreciate the calm, protected waters and um, number of glaciers that are able to see the, their tours. The weather is often damp. Surrounding peaks are snow-capped much of the year, and the glacier hangs above the town to the west. Located in the Portage Valley, an easy hour and a half drive south of Anchorage, two and a half hours from Seward, the Whittier Access Road uh, features the longest vehicle tunnel in North America, 2.5 mile one lane tunnel that accommodates both vehicles and the Alaska Railway Road. It is the only road system entering the community. Advise your clients that access to the road is scheduled. If they are driving themselves, they will need to check for opening times and should be prepared to pay the toll as they enter the tunnel bound for Whittier. There is no toll on the return. Suggest your clients check the Whittier Tunnel website for a schedule um, of when the tunnel is open to the tra vehicle traffic. Advise your clients that they may be unable to make their sailing if they do not arrive at the tunnel at a time when it is open. Bicycle and foot traffic is prohibited through the tunnel and there are vehicle size and other restrictions of which they will need to be aware of. For a recording of the schedule, call the Whittier Tunnel toll free at 877-611-2586. Some, um, some day boat tours include toll fees in the tour fair. Check with the tour companies for more information. For rail service, visit the Alaska Railway um, site, website. Whittier is the west side of the Princess William, Prince William Sound at the head of Passage Canal, Canal God, 60 miles southeast of Anchorage. Um, access by vehicle, Kenai Peninsula and Anchorage via the Seward Highway and Whittier Access Road. Alaska Railroad, um, Railroad from Anchorage, Alaska Marine Highway, Ferry from Valdez and Cordova, or by cruise ship from Seattle and Vancouver. Uh, you have a small handful of accommodation restaurants and shops are open seasonally. Uh, numerous glaciers are accessible from Whittier um, via a variety of boats and kayaking, Kittiwak, Rickery, largest bird work rick, rickery, sorry, of its kind, and Prince William Sound Marine scenery, wildlife, and activities. Wow, that one was a long one. Sorry, guys, I hope they're not all this long. We have two more left. All right, so we're going to take our test now. Is everybody ready? We don't want to leave anybody behind. I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording. All right, so congratulations. Guys, you, you what? I have a different one. It says Anchorage and Anchorage South Beach communities. I didn't see that. Is, is that a question? I'm sorry. I... Yeah, yes, that was a question. It did, you didn't have that same question. I have a different oh, question. Oh, she had a different question. Okay. Yes. All right. Is it just one question that was different? Um, well, I couldn't move forward without answering that one. So I was okay. waiting. So what was that question? It said Anchorage and South which communities. So it says um A Stewart, Whittier, Gadwood, Anchorage, Wasilia, Tolkienia, and I'm not pronouncing it right. Dinelli National Park and Preserves and Fairbanks. Or um, it was and all of them. Yeah, it was it was it was the, the one with all the listing. That was one of the questions that was on there. Yeah. No, I can only take, I can only pick one. That's okay. I'll pick the first one. And see. No, that's what I'm saying. It's the one with all of them. Doesn't it have like 10 different ones in one of the answers? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Okay. So what's the next one? Did you pass or? Are we okay to move forward? I believe yeah. that was Anna who was asking the questions. Okay. All right. So uh, we will move on. Caroline, yeah, I'm going to probably have you help out. So if you don't mind, I'll... Um, I'll read this one and then maybe I'll hand you over the next one. This one's only five, luckily. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, so this is far north, one of the most diverse regions in Alaska, filled with rich cultural influences from the indigenous people of Alaska and colorful gold rush days of the past. Pristine wilderness areas cover, oops, am I recording? Sorry, yeah. Okay. Um, colorful gold rush days of the past, pristine wilderness areas over landscape ranging from coastal plains to mountain ranges. Geography, the Church Chukchi Sea, Bering Sea, Arctic Ocean border the region. Most of the far north is located west and north of the Yukon River and north of the Arctic Circle. The Brooks Range, um, the northernmost mountain range in Alaska is a land of dramatic glacier made peaks and valleys of wild rivers and gentle foothills, which slope northward to the Arctic coastal plain. Permafrost, a layer of frozen ground of which only the top few inches typically thaw affects much of the landscape. Though there are few trees throughout the region, there is much vegetation. Wildflowers, grasses, and mosses color the tundra in summer and have been an important component in the indigenous people's subsistence lifestyle for generations. History, Alaska's far north is home to the Inupiat Eskimos, many of whom still live a subsistence lifestyle and preserve their history verbally from generation to generation. The far north region was largely unexposed to Western culture until the late 1800s when gold brought prospectors north to Nome. Many prospectors stayed to find their fortune, either mining or gold on the beaches of Nome or providing services to the miners. In 1968, the largest oil field in North America was discovered on the north slope of Alaska and the Trans-Alaska Pipeline System was constructed to move the oil from the far north to the tankers in Prince William Sound. Now, because of the established national and state parks, refuge, re, refuges, um, refuge um, preserves accessible indigenous communities, tourism is playing a role in the region, providing economic opportunities for locals and exposure of the region to the rest of the world. <clears throat> the climate far north in the incredible part of Alaska in summer, winter uh, temperatures can vary dramatically. Communities along the coast will see snow in the winter lasting from October, sometimes through April. Climate is drier into the, re into the interior. Getting around communities of the far north are accessible year round from Fairbanks and Anchorage via jet, small aircraft, and in summer, limited cruise ship visits. Your clients wishing to get a taste of the far north can take a day trip into the northernmost communities in the U.S., such as Nome, um, Kotzblu, Barrow, Prudhoe Bay, or they may want to dedicate weeks to a true off-the-grid experience, rafting and hiking some of the world's last authentic wilderness. Driving in the far uh, north is limited. Your clients may ask you about the Dalton Highway, also known as Hall Road. This road runs, from, runs more than 400 miles from Prudhoe Bay to Fairbanks and is, gravel ex, and is gravel except for approximately 100 miles of the southern portion. While Prudhoe Bay is accessible only as a prearranged tour, your clients could rent a car in Fairbanks and drive dead horse and back. However, it is also always important to ask the rental agency if they allow their cars to be driven on the Hall Road. Another option is taking a package tour out of Fairbanks, which includes the road and its attractions. Nome's unique road system of more than 300 miles of paved and gravel roads provides an opportunity for your clients to rent a car, explore the surrounding areas, and even drive to another community, either independently or with a guide. The rivers of the far north region provide access to remote communities and wilderness areas by raft and riverboat. Arrangements should be made in advance for equipment guides and permits. In winters, the rivers turn to ice roads and can be uh, driven by snowmobile or dog sled.
All right. All right, all right, all right. All right, Arctic Coast. You ready, Caroline? Yes, I am. All right, perfect. Thank all you right. so much. Yeah, no problem. Give your voice a rest. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the Arctic coast is home to the northernmost community in the United States, as well as the largest oil field in North America. Access is by road, air, and seasonally by ocean. Barrow. Barrow is one of the largest Inupiat Eskimo settlements in Alaska, and it is the seat of the 88,000 square mile North Slope Borough, the world's largest municipal government. It is also the farthest north frontier settlement in the United States and the northernmost town in North America. Traditionally, Barrow is known as, oh my, Akpigvik by the indigenous people, meaning place where owls are hunted. Although Barrow is one of the most modern communities in the region, hunting of whales, seals, walruses, Caribou and ducks is still important for both traditional and economic reasons. Marnie, do you want me to scroll? Oh, sorry. There you go. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I can do it. Sorry. Okay. Visitors may see some residents of Barrow heading for whale camps in April and May, as whaling and other subsistence activities still play an important role in this Arctic community. In the summer months, tour operators offer day or night pack day or overnight package tours of the area that can include touring the community and meeting locals or photograph photographing the unique, unique wildlife of this region. Tour operators also offer trips in the winter for visitors wishing to experience the 24 hours of darkness or to look for the aurora borealis and polar bears. Location. Barrow is located on the Chukchik Sea Coast 10 miles southwest of Point Barrow, which is the northernmost point of the United States. Barrow is 725 miles from Anchorage, three hours by jet from Fairbanks, 340 miles above the Arctic Circle. Access scheduled jet service from Anchorage and Fairbanks and air taxi service. Accommodations, Barrow has a few hotels and restaurants. Most food and supplies can be brought here as well as native, bought here as well as native arts and crafts. Attractions, the Arctic Ocean, partly covered by sea ice throughout the year, almost completely ice covered in winter. Inupiat Heritage Center and Museum offers artifacts, exhibits, and native arts and crafts for Burnick, site, an archaeological site approximately two miles north of the Barrow Airfield. Um, the Burnick culture, which existed about 500 to 900 AD, is represented by a group of 16 dwelling mounds and is considered a key link between the prehistoric cultures of Alaska and Canada. Cape Smythe Whaling and Trading Station, Located in nearby Browerville, Cape Smythe was built as a whaling station in 1893 and is the oldest frame building in the Arctic. Will Rogers and Wiley Post Monument commemorates the 1935 airplane crash of the American humorist and the famous pilot located across from the airport. Dalton Highway. Your clients may be interested in driving the most gravel Dalton Highway, also known as the Hall Road, over the Arctic Circle and onto Dead Horse. A hardy wilderness trip, this service road parallels the northernmost portion of the Trans-Alaska Pipeline and is more than 400 miles long. Few services are available, but wildlife and fishing is abundant. For road conditions and public access restrictions, contact the Alaska Department of Transportation or call this number, or if in the state, dial 511. Air and coach tours from Fairbanks to Dead Horse and Prudhoe Bay are available as well. Refer to Alaska, travelalaska.com for listings. Dead Horse <laughs> is the service town for Prudhoe Bay and has the only overnight accommodations and restaurant for the public. A gift shop and car rental are also on site. 
Tourist Prudhoe Bay depart from here and must be prearranged. Prudhoe Bay is 200 miles east of Barrow and the home of the largest oil field in North America. The 800 mile Trans-Alaska Pipeline System starts here and ends in Valdez. Group tours are available out of Dead Horse. Refer to TravelAlaska.com for package tour operations offering this option. Yay, thank you so much. <laughs> that. See, that's what we do. We, we share and cooperate, help each other. All right, anybody else wanna read? <clears throat> Okay, I'll do this one. If anybody else wants to volunteer, let me know. Brooks Range. Isolated mountains, unspoiled rivers of the Brooks Range offer an unparalleled wilderness experience. Thousands of caribou migrate through millions of acres, hectares of wilderness park lands and mountains of the Brooks Range each year. Below are the park lands included in this area. Cape Krusenstern National Monument, Kabuka Valley National Park, Nautak National Preserve, Selawik National Wildlife Refuge, Gates of the Arctic National Park and Preserve, Arctic National Wildlife Re Refuge. From Fairbanks or Bettles, this is the headquarters for many Alaskan backcountry guides. Visitors can fly to wilderness lodges scattered throughout the Brooks Range. Accommodations and amenities. <clears throat> Basic hotel accommodations are available in the larger communities of Nome, Barrow, and Kotzpoo, and all have B&Bs. Smaller communities may have B&Bs or lodges, but overall accommodations can be very limited. Arrangements should be made in advance. The larger communities of Barrow, Kotzpoo, and Nome have restaurants. In smaller communities, meals can sometimes be purchased at the local school or senior center. Typically, there is a grocery store, but supplies can be limited. It is wise to check this out ahead of time. Some restaurants and most um, grocery stores may take credit may not take credit cards. So encourage your clients to purchase food locally where possible and have cash on hand to take advantage of the opportunity. Remind them that prices may be higher due to additional shipping costs. Also advise them to have some snacks with them just in case stores are closed or there are none available. Shopping opportunities unique to the far north, including purchasing traditional Eskimo clothing, baskets, dolls, ivory and bone carvings. These can be purchased from local shops, galleries, museums, and sometimes even directly from the artist. Advise your clients to have cash on hand for these local purchases as some of the smaller villages and many of the artists are unable to process credit cards. Anaktuvak <laughs> pass. Wow. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Um, oops, sorry. Uh, in the central uh, northwest of the central uh, Brooks Range, Anaktuvak uh, Pass is the last remaining settlement of the Nunamiat or inland northern Inumat Eskimo. Their ancestors, who date back to 500 BC, settled the village in this area because it lies directly on a caribou migration route, a departure point for trips into the gates of the Arctic. National Park uh, and Preserve on a Tuvok Pass is also included in some package tours of the Arctic. The attractions there, you have Simone Pontiac Memor Memorial Museum operates year round offering geological exhibits, Nanamiet uh, cultural displays, local crafts available for purchase. You have the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge located in the southeastern area of the far north, 20 million acres Arctic National Wildlife Refuge protects unique Arctic land forms wildlife birds and plants. There are no roads, so visitors must fly in, usually from Fairbanks. It is the site of three wild and scenic rivers, the Avashik, Shinjak, and Wind Rivers. <clears throat> Attracts visitors interested in the river rafting and kayaking, wildlife birding, hiking, and mountain climbing. This area can either be explored independently or it can be traveled through a package tour with a guide. Bettles, a departure point for trips into the gates of the Arctic National Park and Preserve. Local lodges can provide accommodations. Local outfitters and guides can arrange for wilderness excursions and expeditions. This is also a popular place in winter to view northern lights and a quick air taxi flight from Fairbanks. 
gates of the Arctic National Park Preserve, <clears throat> one of the finest wildlife areas in the world, straddles in the Arctic Divide in the Brooks, um, Brooks Range. America's northernmost chain of mountains, second only to Wrangell St. Elias National Park in size, Gates of the Arctic cover 13,238 square miles, sprawls 800 miles from east to west, and is entirely north of the Arctic Circle. It extends from the southern foothills of the Brooks Range across the range's rugged um, peaks and down the north slope. Most of the park is a maze of glaciated valleys and gigant rugged mountains covering with boreal forests or treeless slopes of Arctic tundra north of the divide. It is a habitat for grizzly bears, wolves, doll sheep, moose, caribou, and wolverines. Fishing is considered superb for grayling and Arctic char in the clear streams and for lake trout into the larger, deeper lakes. Within this preserve are six waterways protected under the wild and scenic river systems, miles of valleys, tundra slopes to hike, and of course, the gates themselves. Mount Boreal um, and Frigid Crags are the gates that flank the north fork of the Coyoca River. In 1929, Robert Marshall found an un unobstructed path northward to the Arctic coast of Alaska through these landmark mountains. <clears throat> Marshall's name for the two mountains has remained ever since. With the exception of Dalton Highway, the park is far from any roads and is home to only um, <clears throat> one village. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, uh, not nope, to have pass. Eight more um, indigenous valleys dot the perimeter, but all have um, less than 400 permanent residents, okay? Um, gates of the Arctic contain no National Park Service facilities, visitor centers or campgrounds. The only trails are those made by the Western Arctic caribou herd, the largest in Alaska. Um, at 490,000, the only people passing through are the truly adventurous visitors or subsist subsistence hunters. All right, and then the park is only accessible by air from Fairbanks, um, Bettles, or Anatovuk Park. It is um, the remoteless, um, attracts mostly um, experienced backcountry travelers for float trips. And <clears throat> excuse me, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Backpacking tracks are base camp set up to enjoy day hiking and fishing. Many visitors join guided trips that are a handful of outfitters offer in summer for rafting and hiking, or in the winter for dog mushing and cross country skiing. Either as an independent traveler or as a part of a guided expedition, a visit to the gates of the Arctic require careful planning and advance reservations are recommended. Now we have uh, Western Arctic. Uh, while remote, the Western Arctic is very accessible. Two of the largest communities in the far north, Kotzebue and Nome, are located here and have daily jet service. Smaller villages, national parks and preserves are served by scheduled and charter air taxis. Natural history and local culture are major attractions to this area. North of Nome, this park encompasses many landforms, including beaches, sand dunes, granite, spires, barrier islands in the Bering Sea, tundra, as well as serpentine hot springs located in the mountain valleys, considered a spiritual area by the Inupiat Eskimo people. The park is named after the land link that connected Alaska and Asia during the last uh, ice age. Arrange with tour operators, outfitters to provide services and equipment for your clients wishing to visit the park. Um, access by air taxi or small boat in summer, air snowmobile or dog sled in winter, Kobuk um, Valley National Park uh, in northwest, 17, a 1.7 million acre park in northwest Alaska. Kobuk Valley National Park occupies a broad valley where the middle section of the Kobuk River is in circled by the Baird and Waring mountain ranges. Located 75 miles east of Kotzebue, this um, semi-enclosed bowl protects several unique features and one of um, Alaska's true oddities, the Great Kabuk sand dunes. The 25 square mile um, Great Kabuk sand dunes, the Little Kabuk sand dunes near Onion Portage, and the Hunt River dunes cover much of the southern Kabuk Valley and constitute the largest active sand dunes found in the Arctic. 
uh, formed by the grinding action of glaciers, these wind sculptured dunes rise as high as 100 feet and are stabilized by the area's vegetation. The dunes accessible by a strenuous hour long hike along Cavett Creek from the Kabuk River lie 40 miles <clears throat> above the Arctic Circle, yet summer temperatures there can soar to 100 degrees. Uh, Kabuk Valley sits astride the transition um, zone between the boreal forest and the treeless Arctic tundra that extends westward of the Chuk Chukchi Sea at this northern um, at its northern limit here, the boreal forest is an open woodland of small trees in a mat of thick tundra. Section of the Kabuk River also runs through the park. Its bluffs, some of which stand more than 150 feet, hold permafrost, ice, wave, ice wedges, and ice age mammal fossils. The slow moving Kabuk River offers extraordinary wilderness float trip. Opportunities through scenic boreal forests teeming with wildlife other activities include backpacking, fishing, dog sledding, hiking, and boating. You can get there by air taxi from Kotzebue. Uh, Kotzebue is located 26 miles north of the Arctic Circle. Kotzebue is named after Polish um, explorer Otto von Kotzebue, who stumbled into the village in 1816 while searching in the Northern Passage. The community serves as a transport and commerce Commerce Center for surrounding villages and has one of the largest communities in the indigenous people in all rural Alaska. About 80% of the residents in Inupiat Eskimo, many residents practice traditional subsistence activities as well as using, oops, dang it, um, using modern, um, dang, where'd I go? Um, <clears throat> uh, ba -ba 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 using modern you dump it in that down father okay sorry i accidentally hit the wrong button okay well um float go. trip right by the right picture here. okay thank you um exploring stumbled onto the village Community serves as transport. Uh, many residents practice traditional substance activities as use of modern technology. Most visitors to Katsupu uh, arrive as part of a package tour. The National Park Museum or Park Service operates a facility in Katsupu year round. It's a departure point into Noatak National Preserve, Kabuk Valley National Park, and Cape Crescent National Monument. All three areas are available for visitors for day visits or multi-day wilderness excursions through tour operators, guides, and outfitters. Refer to travelalaska.com for contact information. Kutzpu is, um, is on Baldwin Peninsula in the Kutzpu Sound, three miles long split, which ranges in width from 1,100 feet to 3,600 feet, located near the mouths of the Kabuk, Noatak and Selowick rivers, 549 miles northwest of Anchorage and 26 miles above the Arctic. Daily jet service from Anchorage via Nome and air taxi service. One motel, a few B&Bs and few restaurants in Kotzebue. Food and most supplies are available for purchase as well as Inupiat Eskimo arts and crafts. The attractions there, you have the Cultural Center of Arctic, offers information about traditional clothing, foods, harvesting, and survival techniques. Um, Front Street, narrow gravel road on the ocean of the northern edge of the town features salmon drying on racks, fishing boats crowded the, crowding the beach to be repaired, and locals preparing for upcoming winter. Kutzpu Cemetery, decorated spirit houses have been erected over many of the graves. The Kotzbu Senior Center, many indigenous artifacts, welcomes visitors to potlatches, uh, musicals, and dance celebrations, Museum of the Arctic, cultural slideshow, demonstrations of drumming wildlife, dioramas, uh, performances by the Kotzbu Eskimo dancers, and traditional storytelling. And the National Park uh, Service headquarters provides information about the surrounding national parklands. And last and but not you, least, you want me to read in? Sure, please. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Nome. Nome still retains the charm of the gold rush town that existed 100 years ago. Today, people still enjoy trying their hand at gold panning in the area. Muskox roam the hills as they did thousands of years ago, and birds continue to follow their migration paths. 
Indigenous families gather berries, fish for salmon, and hunt for sea mammals as their ancestors did. Nome offers sweeping views of seemingly endless tundra, plentiful wildlife, gold rush history, and indigenous culture. Nome is also the finish line for the 1,049 mile, sorry about that, <laughs> and it around trail sled dog race, which conditions permitting starts in Wasilla the first Saturday of Sunday of every March after a ceremonial start on Saturday in Anchorage. The mushers take between nine and 14 days to complete the race and reach the Buried Arch, the official finish line in Nome. Viewing the start and finish of the race is a very popular event attracting visitors from all over the world. Some tour operators offer packages allowing visitors to follow the mushers to various remote points along the Iditarod Trail. Nome lies along the Bering Sea on the south coast of the Seward Peninsula facing Norton Sound. It is 539 miles northwest of Anchorage, a 75 minute flight. It lies 102 miles south of the Arctic Circle and 161 miles east of Russia. Access, scheduled air service from Anchorage and Fairbanks and seasonal ships. The accommodations are a few hotels, B&Bs and apartments are available in Nome, as well as a number of restaurants. Attractions, artifacts of the gold rush, see abandoned dredges, um, Turn of the century steam engines, historic mining claims, railroad track and decaying trestles, the buried arch, the finish line for the Iditarod trail sled dog race, the last great race on earth, depicting the life-saving journey from Seward to Nome during the 1925 diphtheria epidemic. Uh, Marnie, can you scroll? Oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> The Carrie M. McLean Memorial Museum, daughter of a prospector, Carrie McLean arrived in Nome when she was eight and grew to become the town historian and one of Nome's leading citizens. With rare artifacts and 6,000 historical photos and exhibits, the museum showcases the lives of the gold prospectors and presents the art and lifestyle of the Bering Straits indigenous people. The Dexter Saloon, Located in Dexter, just outside of Nome, this bar was operated by Wyatt Earp during the height of the Alaska Gold Rush. The last train to nowhere, the locomotive shipped to Nome in the late 1880s for a railroad that never materialized. Native art, carvings out of walrus ivory and whale bone, as well as handicrafts. Seward Peninsula and its three main roads, Nome Teller, 72 miles, Nome Council, 73 miles, and Nome Tyler, 85 <coughs> miles. St. Lawrence Island lies in the Bering Sea, 200 miles west of Nome and 38 miles from Russia. It is home to more seabirds than humans. While the island has been inhabited intermittently for the past 2,000 years by Yupik Eskimos and is now home to approximately 1,300 people, it hosts 2.7 million seabirds during nesting season. In early June, the number of puffins, auklets, moors, kittiwakes, eiders, loons, and many other seabirds that pass by the point, either migrating to their Arctic breeding grounds or local nesters on Sivakak Mountain, is astounding. At times, it is estimated tens of thousands are in the air. Bird watchers from around the world travel to the island in search of Asiatic species rarely found in North America. Birding tours to Gamble, located on the Northwest Cape, are available out of Anchorage. St. Lawrence residents who either live in Gamble or Sevunga on the northern coast are 95.5% Yupik Eskimo or at least part Yupik Eskimo. The isolation of the island has helped maintain their traditional St. Lawrence Yupik culture, their language, and a subsistence lifestyle based on marine mammals. Most residents are bilingual with Siberian Yupik still the first language. The economy is largely based on subsistence harvests from the sea, including seal, walrus, fish, and bowhead and gray whales. <coughs> walrus hide boats are still used to hunt. Several archaeological sites near Gamble are on the National Register of Historical Places. On clear days, the mountains of Russia are visible. 
And St. Lawrence Island is accessible from Nome by scheduled and air and charter air taxi service. Woo, thank you. Yes. Okay, guys, we have one more left. So we have our, our second test. Hopefully you guys are hang in there and let's finish this up. Hopefully it's not a very intro. Oh my God, it's 10, but it's uh hopefully. What was the short. answer to the last one? What was the question? Uh, the more seabirds and humans in what island? St. Lawrence. Yeah, yeah. St. Lawrence. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Everybody good? All right. Yeah. <clears throat> Intro. In the travel industry, standards, definitions for niche markets. Active adventure, soft adventure, education, special needs, family, RV driving, wilderness package or organized, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, LGBT, eco travel, and so on. In reality, these markets are not so cut and dried, which is especially true in Alaska, where niche groups tend to dramatically overlap. Luxury cruises ply wildlife, wild waterways, while National Park Service naturalists simultaneously educate passengers on the geogra geography and wildlife they are viewing. A family rents an RV to visit the parks and communities on Alaska's road system, do a little fishing, and enjoy some special time together. A traveler conscious, um, uh, conscious, con conscientious of the fragile ecosystem in which he or she is traveling boards a bus to travel deep into Denali National Park and preserve to stay at a wilderness lodge offering hiking, canoeing, hot showers, and homemade meals. Here we will give you a few details on niche markets and offer some suggestions. All right, so adventures. <clears throat> All right, adventure is truly subjective. The National Tour Association says this is a very broad category that generally focuses on the outdoors and physical activities, such as rock climbing, skiing, hiking, kayaking, or canoeing. For many travelers, Alaska is synonymous with adventure. Adventure, whether it is hard or soft, is a component of a day's activity, no matter if your clients are on luxury cruise ship, in a hotel, staying in an RV or b, &B. There are plenty of options for your clients wishing to experience adventure in Alaska. Many outfitters will provide gear and instructions, so no matter your client's skill levels, they will be sure to be comfortable and safely in, in, enjoy the outdoors of Alaska. Here are a few active options. Kayaking. Kayaking tours can be booked through several adventure tour operators. Rentals are available in most Southern communities for those interested in going out on their own. Some areas well known for kayaking are Glacier Bay National Park, um, Ken Kenai Fjords National Park, and Prince William Sound. Canoeing, canoe routes are um, have been established in a uh, wood tick Tick Chick State um, Park um, out of Dillon Hang, Dillingham, and in road accessible areas like Kanao, Kanai Peninsula and through the Tangle Lakes region off the Denali Highway, as well as other regions throughout the state. Guides and outfitters offer local knowledge and can provide all necessary equipment for your clients' safety and enjoyment. They will also have the appropriate permits and passes for any waterways to be used. River rafting, variety of river rafting <clears throat> options are available throughout Alaska and can be, um, uh, they can be a full day and a half day scenic uh, float trip, um, approximately <clears throat> um, appropriate for all ability levels. Um, sorry, I can't just read it, but whitewater um, <clears throat> water expeditions. Uh, for more um, advanced adrenaline junkies or fly in wilderness um, excursions for those that really want off the grid. Uh, scenic um, <clears throat> float trips, uh, Mendel, sorry, I'm putting on my, my leg thing. Ugh. All right, um, scenic float trips, Men Mendenhall River in Juneau, Juneau. Alaska Chilcot uh, Bald Eagle Preserve in Haines, Spencer Glacier Iceberg Float Tour in conjunction um, on the Alaska Railroad, Whitewater Expeditions, Nanana River in the Denali National Park, 
Montanuska River in Matsu Valley, Kanai or Six Mile Rivers in Kanai Peninsula, Keystone Canyon at the lower or low river near Valdez. Fly in multi day, multi week wilderness excursion. So, outfitters can provide all the planning, transportation, gear, and guides to get your clients into some of the most remote, scenic wilderness um, rivers in the world. Many of those areas are discussed in modules two through six, or visit Travel Alaska for more info. Another option to present to your clients is rafting either the Tachanini Alsic rivers. Both are within the world's largest internationally protected wilderness area and considered a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The Wrangell St. Elias National Park and Preserve, Kluane National Park and Preserve, Tachena Alsek Provincial Park and Glacier Bay National Park Preserve. Both rivers are considered one of the must-dos in the world of river rafting. You have bike riding, whether taking to the mountain trails, paved or unpaved. Alaska is a great destination for bicycle riders. Scenic, rolling highways, wide shoulders are one option. Less traveled secondary roads with little traffic are another. Bikers can camp, stay in lodges or hotels, roadhouses or B&Bs. Uh, rentals are available in most of the larger communities, while book bike, com bike tour companies offer supported group bike tours. Uh, most visitor information centers have uh, maps with biking trails and Alaska people even bike in winter. Some rental companies offer fat tire bikes, which provide extra traction needed to pedal through the snow and slick winter terrain, along with the necessary gear for riding in winter connect conditions. Hiking, be it guided or unguided, long or short, day hikes or overnight expeditions, there is literally something for every hiker who comes to any region of Alaska. Many wilderness guides and outfitters may offer fully supported hiking tours for independent hikers, maps, guides, and information about necessary permits or fees to access restricted areas are available from Alaska Public Lands Information Centers. Wilderness hikers are minutes from most communities in Alaska. State and national parks have extensive hiking trails within their boundaries. And the Forest Air Service has cabins your clients can hike into that can be reserved ahead of time. Alaska makes it easy to get out on the trail. Your clients can buy or rent any gear they need from local outfitting stores. And hiking doesn't stop when the snow falls. Winter hikers um, take to the trails with snowshoes to explore the spectacular beauty, winter beauty. Remind your clients that all hikers and bikers should use common sense. They should always tell someone where they're going, bring apple food and water and emergency gear. Plan for the weather, dress in layers, respect other uses of the users of the trail, remember their camera, and most importantly, be aware of wildlife. While many travelers want to get up and close, sighting of wildlife, it's crucial to remember these animals are wild and can be dangerous and unpredictable. Dog mushing. Clients can get a taste of what dog mushing is all about in the summer and winter. Dog mushers are so eager to share the best of Alaska state sport that they are opening their homes, dog yards, and kennels to Alaska visitors. Summer tours can include riding on the back of a dog pulled wheeled cart, trying on dog mushing gear, holding puppies, taking lots of pictures, even meeting some it, it to Tarad uh, trail sled dog race veterans. Some tours include taking a helicopter onto a glacier and mushing the dogs in the snow. If your clients want to see the dogs in full action in the best season, winter is the time to visit. They can be a spectator at the numerous dog sledge races across the state or ride in a sled themselves. Maybe even ride the runners as a musher. More important, more information can be found in winter travel section of this module. Let me know and whenever what, you want a break, Marmy. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Thank okay. you. We can take turns. Thank you. <laughs> For clients coming to Alaska just to fish, there are many destination fishing lodges that offer additional activities for people wanting to accompany the person fishing but are not interested in fishing themselves. Many coastal communities host fishing derbies where the lucky angler can win cash prizes by catching a big fish or a fish that has been caught, tagged, and released. Sizable awards are available. And if your client happens to be fishing when a derby is on, you might suggest they consider entering. 
The nominal fee for admission is a small price to pay for the excitement of being involved in the event. And every year there are tales of lucky anglers who have caught the otherwise, who have caught an otherwise prize winning fish, but neglected to enter the derby. Keep your clients informed so this doesn't happen to them. Contact the coastal communities your clients will be visiting for a complete list of derby dates. All people fishing must have a license. Check Alaska sport fishing regulations for the most up-to-date information. Birding, with more than 500 documented species winging their way to and around the state, birding fans flock to Alaska. They may travel independently or with a tour group devoted to birding. Birders do take their pastime very seriously and need a travel professional who takes their special interests seriously and is able to provide the information they need. The, they most likely have done their homework and know what birds they can find in Alaska, but may need your assistance in getting to birding sites. And all the better if you can surprise them with some additional tidbits of information, such as a list of birding activities in Alaska, including these festivals. The Steikeen River Garnet Festival in Wrangell in April, Copper River Delta Shorebird Festival in Cordova in May, Tachemak Bay Shorebird Festival in Homer in May, and Alaska Bald Eagle Festival in Haines in November. Visit TravelAlaska.com to learn about additional events throughout the state. There are also Audubon chapters throughout Alaska. They can provide a list of prime birding spots that you can give to your clients. Other special birding sites include Creamers, Field Migratory Bird Refuge in Fairbanks, Nome, Barrow, Chilkat River, Haines, Atu Island in the Aleutian Chain, St. Paul Island in the Pribilofs, Copper River Delta in Cordova, Potter March in Anchorage, Gamble, St. Lawrence Island, Bering Sea, Alaska Raptor Center in Sitka. Encourage all your clients to traveling to Alaska to keep their eyes open and their binoculars handy. They will see birds in Alaska and may even begin calling themselves birders. Wildlife viewing. One of the reasons visitors from all over the world come to Alaska is to see wildlife. And keeping an eye out for it is a future feature of just about any trip to the state. There are numerous wildlife viewing sites around the state that provide the chance to see bear, moose, caribou, mountain goats, doll, sheep, or other animals in their natural habitat. Sometimes the wildlife can be seen right in Alaska's urban locales. Marine wildlife viewing sites and excursions along the coast offer chances to see whales, sea otters, seals, or sea lions. Sometimes visitors forget that wildlife is wild and are disappointed when they don't see a particular animal or if they do, it is at quite a distance. The travel professional can assist their clients in having realistic expectations about their wildlife viewing opportunities, reminding them they will be searching for wildlife, encouraging them to appreciate the chance to be in the animal's natural habitat and reminding them to pack a pair of binoculars. You can also encourage your clients to look for evidence that an animal has been there. For example, footprints on the ground or snow, claw marks on trees, flattened grass from bedding down, or bite marks on signs. <laughs> An overview of wildlife viewing guidelines and sites can be found at the Alaska Department of Fish and Game website. Consider referring your client there or copy some of the information and include it in their final documents. Wildlife viewing opportunities are statewide and include wildlife tours by bus, Denali National Park and Preserve, fly-in bear viewing in Southwest Alaska, fly-in, boat-in or roadside bear viewing in the Inside Passage, whale watching cruises from coastal communities, including Kenai Fjords National Park, Prince William Sound, Gustavus, Glacier Bay National Park and Preserve, and Juneau. Undersea marine life viewing and snorkeling in Ketchikan, polar bear viewing in the far north region. If your client is looking for guaranteed wildlife sightings and an educational background on the wildlife of Alaska, encourage them to visit the Alaska Raptor Center in Sitka, the Alaska Sea Life Center in Seward, 
the Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center in Portage, the Alaska Zoo in Anchorage, the Musk Ox Farm and Reindeer Farm in Palmer, the Large Animal Research Station in Fairbanks. Perfect, thank you. I had to have some soup, so that helped me. <laughs> All right, cultural tourism. Experiencing Alaska Native cultures is high on the list for many Alaska visitors and with more than 10,000 years of human history. Alaska offers endless options for learning about our traditional lands, languages, and ways of being. Hear stories passed down from elders and feel the heartbeat of drums used in traditional dancing. Watch a blanket toss at a whaling celebration. Learn about totem carving techniques passed down from generation to generation. Learn about regional and local Alaska Native functional and creative arts, ranging from carving and basket weaving to sewing and silversmithing. <clears throat> Sorry, okay. In general, there are five groups of Alaska Native people identified by region. Inupiat and St. Lawrence Island, Yupik, in the Arctic. At the Baskin in South Central and Interior Alaska, Yupik and Kupik, and Yurangax and so, oh my gosh, I let in Alaska in Southwest, dang it. Um, Ibak had the Chishimian and Tinglet in the Inside Passage. That may be a test question. Alaska Native cultures strongly influence our way of life from the names of the rivers, mountains, and communities on traditional lands to art architecture and culture in our cities. 15% of Alaska's 730 residents are Alaska Native with 20 distinct cultures, 300 direct, different dialects, 300. Many Alaska Native people live in villages scattered along the coastline and rivers of Alaska where they still practice traditional subsistence, um, hunting and fishing lifestyles in all five regions um, of our state and in communities, both large and small. Our culture and history are shaped by Alaska Native language, artwork, storytelling ceremonies, and customs. Alaska Native Cultural Center, museums, and tours across the state are a good way to get an introduction to Alaska Native culture. Uh, storytelling, song and dance performances, art demonstrations, art collections can um, all be experienced firsthand at cultural centers and on cultural tours. Many museums and cultural centers sell arts and crafts made by Alaska Native artists. Look for the silver hand seal, which signifies that you are buying an authentic Alaska Native handicraft. For visitors who want to explore Alaska Native villages, tour companies can arrange air transportation tours of remote Alaska Native villages throughout the state. In larger communities, visitors can explore collections of arts and artifacts at museums, cultural centers, and some Alaska Native corporations that have buildings open to the public. 26-acre Alaska Native Heritage Center in Anchorage showcases all 11 of the state's major uh, Alaska Native cultures. Visitors can learn about Alaska Native traditions from the past and present through the interactive displays, exhibits, events, films, and the six authentic Alaska Native housing sites situated around a scenic lake. The Alaska Native Heritage Center makes a great starting point for the cultural visit to Alaska. Alaska Native uh, cultures are beautifully illustrated throughout the arts. Various indigenous groups are known for their special talents, distinct styles of carving, beading, and weaving, or for their cultural dances, singing, and drumming. Visitors to Alaska can experience performances of traditional music and dance and see numerous examples of both ancient and modern Alaska Native art in villages, galleries, and museums and cultural centers. Uh, next. Okay, winter travel. Anybody want to read? Come on. Come on, guys. We have a few more, right? Hey, Mark. Yeah? Hey, why don't you try to have the thing um, do it for you again? Have who? Have the computer read for you. All you How do, do you do? Put where your do cursor in front of where, where you want it to start reading. Right. Right there, and then you right click. I'm there. Okay, did you right click? 
Yep, it says back, forward, reload, save, print, cast, search image, send to your device, translate to English, uh, get image descriptions, view page, or inspect. Huh. What um what windows do you have? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, you might have an older version. I've got a you windows. <clears throat> Um, I think Your you have to right set it up. Um, maybe under sound, um, speakers, mono, microphone, headset. Do you set it up on Zoom maybe? Is that no, a, it's a with Zoom? the Windows program. Okay, so I'm on Windows under sound. Um, what if you try like um, highlighting the text and right clicking on it? Sometimes that works. Uh, copy, copy, search, print, translate, get image, inspect. That's okay. I'll just keep reading. <laughs> That's yeah, I think there's a um, setting okay. you can turn on in accessibility in settings okay. that'll okay. enable that. So I'm on access. I'm on uh, here accessibility. Here we go. Text, visual, mouse pointing, text, magnifier, color, contrast, narrator, audio. There's audio yeah, narrator. Na narrators. Okay. Oops. Oops. Hold on. Um, okay, that's enough. Okay, so go back. Oh my God, sorry guys. Okay, narrator. There we go. Okay, narrator on. Okay. Uh, new natural voices are available. Install now or skip for now. Just skip that. I see. Do you guys hear it? No. Yeah, it's not. I, I'm going to I, I mean, I got it. It just we, we've keeps come this far. You might as well just read the last parts. It's maybe one of <laughs> us could look into that for the um, next. Okay, Alaskans uh, don't hibernate like bears. Can you guys hear me? Sorry, I just figured I'll go back. We we've Can been on here a long time, so I don't want to waste you guys' time. Um, Alaskan don't hibernate. Hi, hibernate like bears winter is uh, when the fun begins and you're officially invited. Whether you desire endless white solitude or activities and events, Alaska has it all from wildlife to nightlife. Winter visitors may be surprised to find out that they are as tough and as most Alaskans and it's neither as dark nor as cold as you might expect. Winter brings six hours of daylight on the shortest day, depending on where you are. And the hours of twilight or dawns on either side, there's plenty of use daylight to get in a full day of activities. With average temperatures around 20 degrees, winter enthusiasts can enjoy Alaska in complete comfort. Alaska starts rapidly gaining daylight in the early spring and dozens of festivals and events taking place in late February and in March. This makes the perfect time to experience winter in Alaska and get a feel for what it's really like in our most defining season. Even the Alaska Railroad operates in the winter with the Aurora Winter Train. Typically, the railroad will operate on the weekends, but also offers uh, additional departures around Idaho Road. The Aurora Winter Train is a wonderful, comfortable way to travel between Anchorage and Fairbanks in the winter months. Sit back and relax with a warm beverage while watching the winter landscape pass by or the northern lights dance overhead. What you'll find is, <clears throat> is that Alaskans embrace winter both by taking part in boundless outdoor adventures and arts and cultural events that showcase the creativity and sense of the community that define the northern lifestyle. Several major winter events bring visitors from around the world to Alaska, so there's plenty to do and see, and prices are often lower than in the busier summer months. Alaska's most popular and iconic winter experiences include dog mushing, northern lights viewing, snowboarding, skiing, Nordic and alpine, snowshoeing, snowmobiles, sports events, and special cultural events. Combine um, that with fantastic locally owned restaurants, museums, and cultural centers, shopping, locally crafted beer, other spirits, 
and you've got a recipe for an incomparable winter holiday. You have dog mushing. The official state sport of Alaska has been part of life in Alaska since its early days, long before it became a part of the United States or European explorers reached its shore. Despite the great distance between some rural communities, traveling by dog team is often still the best way to get around. Today, dog teams are used by rural residents who rely on them to hunt and travel. Weekend hobbyists who enjoy exploring the backcountry with man's best friend and Alaska's version of elite sports um, celebrities, the competitors in the state, um, big name races. For visitors, there are several ways to get in touch with dog mushing, culture of Alaska. Perhaps easiest is to join the cheering fans of one of the dozen races that take place statewide each winter. Sprint races take place frequently, sometimes at designated dog mushing trails and tracks, other times on downtown streets, such um, during festivals or other big events. Start and finish lines of the state's premier long distance races are also exciting. The uh, Tarad Trail dog, uh, Sled Dog Race begins with ceremonial start in downtown Anchorage on the first Saturday in March and the official start of the following Sunday in Willow, snow conditions permitting. <clears throat> there have been several year, there have been years where the official start was moved to Fairbanks due to lack of snow in the South Central region. The race finishes in Nome uh, to the applause of thousands of spectators, typically nine to 15 days later. For truly unique experience, your clients can bid to ride on one of the sleds in the ceremony uh, start of the Tarot, volunteer to work checkpoints throughout the race, or fly into checkpoints to cheer on the teams. The Yukon Quest International Sled Dog Race altern alternates um, in between um, its start between Fairbanks and Whitehorse, Yukon Territory. Depending on the year, you can be part of a send off or the finish line on the frozen Chenna River in downtown Fairbanks in February. Check local events, calendars, and travelalaska.com for upcoming races, tours on hand. Um, experience um, in communities across Alaska, tours are available to allow guests to ride in a sled basket behind the team or even stand on the runners or mush their own team. These tours can range from a couple of hours to several days. The longer experiences include guided winter backcountry camping for truly adventurous. Kennel tours are also um, common. Mushers take guests through their kennels to learn about raising and training of the dog teams, meet puppies and go for a short ride. These experiences are also widely available in the summer when small teams relocate to the tops of the glaciers to continue training year round. Guests travel by helicopter to glacial camps for a truly amazing experience. Winter sports, skiing, snowboarding, alpine sports in Alaska are a way of life, whether your clients are simply looking for a good workout and beautiful surroundings or they're thrill-seeking deep powder attic. Alaska has an experience for everyone. Eagle Crest Ski Area in Juneau and Aliska uh, Resort in Girdwood are the main downhill recreation areas for resort-based alpine skiing and snowboarding. Locals find plenty of opportunity for lift service skiing in Anchorage at Hilltop Ski Area and Alpine Glow at Arctic Valley and in Fairbanks at Mount Aurora, Skeland and Moose Mountain. Uh, backcountry skiing, those that prefer backcountry can enjoy terrain at Thompson Pass near Valdez, <clears throat> Hatcher Pass in Palmer and Turgan Pass at Kenai Peninsula. Clients should have avalanche survival training and the appropriate gear prior to venturing into the Alaska background backcountry. Encourage them to visit Alaska Avalanche Information Center website for days um, avalanche report, cross-country skiing. Easily accessible is just about um, every Alaska community, whether it is groomed trails or trackless mountain sites. The Tony Knowles Coastal Trail in Anchorage, part of which is 10 k Park, is a popular place to start with groomed trails and maintained tracks. Also in Anchorage um, are Russian Jack Springs Park and Hillside Trail System. Cross-country skiers in Fairbanks can enjoy Birch Hill Recreational Center and the University of Alaska Fairbanks Trail System. Eagle Crest Ski Area is also right place to find groomed Nordic track for both cross-country and skate skiing in Juneau. The Kenai 
Peninsula, Hatcher Pass in the Matsu Valley and many other areas offer groomed trails and peaceful winter landscapes for cross-country skiing. Uh, rentals are available in the many communities, making it easy for your clients to incorporate and a great workout into their Alaska winter vacation. Hella skiing in Alaska, you don't need to be an expert skier or snowboarder in order to hella ski. The season runs from late winter to spring, February through April, the time with prime snow conditions, increased daylight hours, safest flying conditions. Most popular areas for hella skiing in Alaska includes Prince William Sound, communities of Valdez and Cordova, as well as Girdwood um, in South Central Alaska and the Inside Passage community in Haines and Juneau. Snowmobile in Alaska, no wilderness is too far out of reach to explore and snowmobile is often the best way to get there. Numerous tuber operators um, offer both guided unguided treks into the backcountry for riders of all abilities. Some excellent snowmobiling locations include Fairbanks, Denali, Tufnina, Valdez, Haines and Matsu Valley, Goodwood and Kenai Peninsula. Oh, and if you go snowmobile in Alaska, don't be confused if people start talking about snow machines. That's the local vernacular for the backcountry machines. <clears throat> winter events. Um, winter is the best time to get an authentic feel for the culture because the season is chock full of events that celebrate the spirit of Alaska. Alaska is known for its quirky festivals, celebrations with plenty of time in the winter, creativity blooms, Events range from unusual and downright odd. The Cordova Ice Worm Festival featuring Miss Ice Worm Competition, Fur Rendezvous in Anchorage, Snowshoe Softball, Ice Bowling, and Miners and Trappers Ball. Tripod Days in Nanana, where gamblers can make a wager on when the Nanana River ice will break up in the spring. Chatanika Days in Fairbank, highlight of which in the annual um, outhouse races. Wilderness Women Contests and Bachelor Auction Ball features fun and days uh, worth of fun events in Talkeetna, a World Ice Carving Championship, serious competition and expedition for all ages to participate in or view incredible temporary works of art in Fairbanks. Museum shows, gallery walks, performances are frequent in most cities. Aurora Borala, something I definitely want to do. Alaska is one of the best places on earth to see the northern lights, colorful band of lights that dance in the dark night sky. Travelers from all over the world come to Alaska each winter to see this stunning display and take advantage of other winter experiences. Science, what are the northern lights exactly? Um, known as Aurora Borealis, occur between 60 to 150 miles above the surface of the earth. To compare, a passenger jet flies between four to seven miles above the earth's surface. The aurora can extend a few hundred miles into space. Most common color displayed is brilliant yellow and green, but the Aurora Borealis can also produce red, blue, and purple patterns. Aurora activity increases with sunspot activity, which generally occur 11 year cycles. Aurora activity approached a maximum in the year 2012. Uh, this will last about four to five years, which means that there will be more auroras visible from locations south of the main aurora occurrence zone than during the solar minimum years. Visitors can track near term activity by taking advantage of the University of Alaska Fairbanks online aurora forecasting tool. And how to see them? While the northern lights occur, occur year round, summer <clears throat> nearly um, near constant daylight makes seeing them next to impossible. So in winter, however, um, clear dark nights tend um, themselves to lend themselves to stunning displays. Sightseeing are also possible during um, the shoulder seasons of early spring and into the fall when day, less daylight leads to darker night skies. The aurora are typically most active between the hours of 11 and 2, so let your clients know um, it will be late night. Many hotels though offer um, Northern Lights wake up calls upon request to wake the visitors so they don't want to miss this experience. And then towns and cities produce ambient light that interferes with aurora viewing. And while the aurora is still visible from cities, it's best to view from the outskirts of town or in an area known for clear dark skies. The interior, especially Fairbanks and far north regions, 
are considered the best in Alaska for northern lights viewing along the aurora can be spotted anywhere in the state, depending on the forecast. Skies must also be completely clear with no cloud cover in order to see it. Uh, luxury, how to define luxury travel. It is attentive, exclusive, unique, first class, customized, personalized, private, high end, opulent. Luxury travel can be all that, but it's your client's definition that matters. It is crucial for you as a travel professional to completely understand that definition and ask the proper questions to decide if a property or experience meets your client's needs and expectations. Um, there are lodges, charter boats and yachts, hotels and transportation services that cater to high end clients looking for highly unique specialized experience. Something to keep in mind, however, is many lodges, inns, excursions, are in extremely remote areas. So while you might not find five-star luxury that are common elsewhere, you will find exceptional hospitality and once in a lifetime experiences that cannot be matched anywhere else in the world. For additional questions on luxury experiences, contact Travel Trade at Alaska TIA organization. Do you want me to take a couple All of right, pages? A few more guys. RV and highway travel, RVers and people choose to tr drive themselves, usually like the outdoors and appreciate the flexibility driving gives them. They tend to be independent, but there is a great deal you can do for their clients. First of all, for those renting their RV or car in Alaska, you can make that reservation as well as book their air and their campground, hotel, motel, B&Bs. You can also book their day excursions. Some suggestions include glacier cruises, flight seeing, uh, <clears throat> charter fishing excursions or any adventure activities. Most communities have information about what there is to see and do and where to stay in the vicinity. The resources available are on travelalaska.com. You can be a local expert for your client and encourage them to call you if there's anything they want to do uh, once they arrive in Alaska. Federal, state, and private campgrounds are available throughout the state. Some have electric hookups and dump stations. Contact the Alaska State Park Federal Parks about public campgrounds and Alaska Campground Owners Association for more information. Wilderness travel. Wilderness travel is an integral part of visiting Alaska. For some travelers, every aspect of Alaska's wilderness, certainly compared to what they may have, may know from back home. Modes of transportation for off the beaten path experience includes four wheel drive vehicles, aircraft, small watercraft, snowmobiles, dog sled skis, all terrain vehicles, ATVs, and bicycles. Accommodations range from lodges and B&Bs to forest service, cabins, and tents, and the activity options are endless. There's over 356 million acres in Alaska, and only about 1 million acres of of them are private. That means there's a great deal of public land available for your clients' recreational purposes in the wilderness. There are 15 national park grounds or park lands in Alaska comprising more than 54 million acres. This is about two thirds of the land in the entire national park system. Glacier Bay National Park and Preserve and Denali National Park may be two of the most recognized and visited national parks and preserves in Alaska. But all the parklands have something special to offer, including wildlife viewing, camping, outdoor photography, cross country skiing, to name a few. A full listing of the national parklands in Alaska is available through Travel Alaska. State Parks, Alaska Division of State Park manages more than 130 park units spread over more than 3 million acres. Ranging from roadside campgrounds to large wilderness parks, there are plenty of background recreation opportunities. One of the best sources of information is the Alaska Public Land Information Center featuring information about state, national parks, and other public lands. There are four offices in the state that are visitor destinations in themselves featuring free museum expeditions, exhibits, video programs, recreation information, and excellent reference libraries. Encourage your clients to visit these centers while in Alaska. Be sure to contact each directly for assistance and reference materials for planning purposes. Special needs, that's what I need right now, right? With my broken leg. LGBT, <clears throat> Alaska welcomes all travelers 
Many accommodation tour and experience options for LGBT clients. Pride Fest is celebrated in Anchorage, Fairbanks, and Juneau annually. And there are a number of LGBTQ, BT, um, friendly restaurants, establishments, and lodging accommodations throughout the state as well. Ecotourism, defined as the practice of traveling to beautiful, natural places for pleasure in a way that does not damage the environment there. Alaska's prime year-round destination for those seeking more personal connection with nature and culture and wilderness. Um, Adventure uh, Green Alaska runs the only certification program in Alaska for tourism business that meets specific standards of economic um, environment and social sustainability. If your client finds the important this important as part of their travel plans, visit AGA website for lists of certified companies that you can ask any tour or travel supplier vendor with whom you are working about their ecotourism policies and practices. Travel for visitors with disabilities, sometimes a niche in itself. Travel for your client um, with a disability is certainly possible in Alaska. A broad range of year-round vacation experiences and travel services are available. Many cruise lines are available, able to accommodate these special needs. However, if your client does not want to take a cruise, they can still come to Alaska and comfortably get around. The Alaska Marine Highway System has cabins configured for travelers with wheelchairs or other special needs. The Alaska Rail Railroad and some tour companies have rail cars and coaches with lifts as well. Also, hotels, motels, taxis, rental vans equipped to meet the needs of the traveler and with disabilities. It might take a few more phone calls or emails on the part of the travel professional, but it can be done. So you can visit the state of Alaska uh, Americans and Disability Act website or call them direct. Traveling with pets. Okay, more and more travelers are vacation with, vacationing with their furry family members. Alaska is a great place to do so. Uh, just be careful. <laughs> pets should be up to date on vaccinations. Owners should travel with appropriate documentation of their pet's health certificate with, from their vet. Most campgrounds and RVs parks allow pets but always check their regulations before including it in your client's itinerary, particularly if they plan to stay in a national or state park. Four-legged family friends, especially dogs, can be tra travel great traveling companions if your client is doing their own itinerary. Pets, unless they are service animals, are not usually welcome on group tours and daily excursions. The Alaska Railway, Railroad does allow pets, but they must be in an airline approved kennel in the baggage to compartment. Many hotels allow pets, but they may charge an additional pet fee. Your clients might want to enjoy a day or overnight excursion where their pet cannot join them. Several of Alaska's communities have pet daycare or boarding facilities available for these instances. It is important that your client's pets have the Bortella um, Bordetella vaccine for them to be allowed in most boarding facilities. In many cases, this vaccine may be specifically requested and is not included in the normal vaccinations. Reservations for boarding pets should be scheduled well in advance as well. Several communities in Alaska do have leash laws, reminding your clients to keep their pets leashed in Alaska. Generally a good recommendation, not only due to being in a strange place, but also because of the amount of wildlife that could be anywhere, even in downtown Anchorage. Several communities feature dog parks where the clients can unleash their dogs, or if your clients are planning to hike any of the Alaska trails, remind them to check the trailhead signs first, as some trails do not allow pets. And last one, guys, yay, and then we're done. All right. Specialty interests and needs continued. Agritourism. Where does a pumpkin grow large enough to second as a carrot? In Alaska. It's not unusual to see record breaking pumpkins weighing in at a thousand pounds. It might be a stretch to imagine vegetable doubling as a vehicle, but that's heavier than most motorcycles. Even with its long winter months and location near the Arctic Circle, Alaska has a robust agricultural scene with more than 20 hours of daylight in the summer. Plants have almost twice as much time to grow. In 1935, the Matanuska colony, an offshoot of President Roosevelt's New Deal Resettlement Initiative, 
to create work for Americans during the Depression and Dust Bowl era, um, marked the start of the agriculture of, um, in Alaska. The experiment sent 200 colonist families to the Matanuska Susista Matsu Valley, north of Anchorage, to settle on 40 acre tracks. Some of these original farms and buildings are still around today and are the basis of new programs and attractions in Matsu Valley. Agricultural attractions have been around in Alaska for years, but recently visitors have become interested in getting their hands in the dirt as well. From you, pick up farms, reindeer and bison farm wineries, breweries, farmers markets and events. There are more and more opportunities to experience Alaska grown. Family owned for more than three decades, Pyra's Pioneer Peak Farm, one of the original homesteads during the colony project has a successfully successful you pick program. Customers can come to the farm, pick from a wide variety of fruits, vegetables, such as artichokes, radishes, strawberries, sugar, snap peas, raspberries, crook neck squash, to name a few. Every year, the Pyras invite locals and visitors to their fall harvest festival to celebrate the season's bounty. Fairbank is also home to another spectacular garden, the northernmost botanical garden in America. University of Alaska Fairbanks Georgeson, Georgeson Botanical Garden has a second function aside from being a pretty place to explore, dedicated to high altitude horticulture. It is also a contributing member of a group of gardens used to research plant culture and conservation. Peony Farms have gained momentum across the state in recent years as well. The fluffy, fragrant dinner-sized blooms um, are at the peak in the mid to late Alaskan summer. With their usual season being in the spring and early summer elsewhere, um, Alaskan peonies are in high demand from flower brokers all over the world. About 15 miles southeast of Fairbanks, just outside North Pole, is the Chena Lakes Farm. Spanning 52 acres of sustainable land, Chena Lakes features a rustic log lodge where guests can experience life on a farm while dining on a complimentary breakfast of locally grown fruit, eggs, dairy, and meat. Visitors can take part in the daily routine of tending to the plants and feeding the donkeys, chicken, and turkeys that live on the property. Alaska's wild and woolly creatures are also attracting travelers. The musk osps. Ox Farm on mile 50 on uh, the Glen Highway near Palmer allows visitors to get up close and personal with a friendly crowd of otherwise scary looking animals. The musk ox, ox is an ice age mammal that has long outlived its woolly mammoth and saber tooth tiger companions. It is believed that the musk ox became extinct from Alaska in the 1800s, but was reintroduced around 1930. The musk ox is most famous for its wool or kiviet, as it is called by the Alaska indigenous people, and is considered some of the rarest and finest wool in the world. A shop in downtown Anchorage sells scarves, hats, and other items knitted from this pricey wool. At Williams Reindeer Farm in Palmer, 150 reindeer live harmoniously with Rocky Mountain elk, horses, and bison. Originally a Matanuska Colony daily Dairy Farm and Williams family has been running the business since 1987. Guests can visit the animals or take part in activities such as hiking, scavenger hunts, and horseback rides. Several agricultural farms throughout the summer months across the state. Culmination of Alaska's agricultural bounty is the Alaska State Fair kicking off in late August. Two week extravaganza brings thousands to hear music, watch dance performances, eat local foods, view prized animals, antique tractors, arts and crafts. And the star of the show, colossal vegetables. Local growers set 10 fruit and vegetable world records between the years 1983 and 2009. Apart from the 127 pound cabbage or the 12, 1,287 pumpkins, the fair is also famous for its beautiful display of local grown growers, cool summers, help flowers maintain their bright and vibrant colors along into um, the late fall, summer and fall. Culinary tourism, Alaska's accommodations, restaurants and nightlife offer true taste of the last frontier. Wild Alaska seafood, including salmon, halibut, king crab, attract visitors from all over the world and can be sampled just about anywhere in the state. 
Each year, more restaurants are joining the local food movement in Alaska by featuring farm to table produce, seafood, and game in their menus. A variety of tour op options are available for your clients to gather their own vegetables and seafood, part participate in a cooking class, and enjoy the fruits of their labor. Culinary tourism is booming in Alaska. Learn more about it at TravelAlaska.com. And then, of course, breweries, wineries, and distilleries. In addition to the local food scene, Alaska boasts a, a thriving beer culture. Ranked fifth in the nation for breweries per capita in 2009, visitors can taste handcrafted brews at a growing number of breweries and brew pubs statewide. Alaska's rich beer brewing history dates back to the Russian occup occupation days of the 1700s, continued through the gold rush era of the late 1800s and early 1900s. Fast forward another century and Alaskans are on the forefront of the craft beer industry using many Alaskan grown ingredients such as birch, honey, spruce, tips, and berries. Microbreweries continue to spring up across the state, offering not only award-winning high-quality beer, but also tasting tours, retail items, additional beer-centric activities include brewery tours, festivals, and special events. You ready for our test? Alaska is also home to a handful of craft distilleries, wineries that typically offer tours, tasting rooms, and on-site sales. Flavors created distilleries are as unique as Alaska, smoked salmon, and fireweed, for example, among others. Wineries producing a range of berry um, vintages are available in certain areas. Oops, I just hung up on him. Um, certain parts of the state. All right. Okay, everybody ready? Let's go ahead and take our test. Hi. Yes. Two days ago, it was the day before yesterday, and they said they had it at the front desk. It was room 1167. Correct, correct. Okay, thank you. All right, bye. I left. I left clothes at at the. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Can you guys hear me? I always mess up. Can you guys hear? Me? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, I left clothes at the other resort. He put them in the drawer, and I'm I'm have my broken leg, so he forgot to pack it. So he had to take oh. the bus down there. So I had to make sure. Oh. I that call. Okay. Sorry, guys. All right. So long one. Again, congratulations, everybody. A very, very long course, but you guys stuck with me. So thank you, thank you. Um, did everybody pass? Right here, you get your certificate. You can preview it. You can download it, okay? Well, you that's are a now, pretty certificate. Yep, a specialist. <laughs> Make sure you post it on social media. Uh, let people know you can now book their amazing vacations, okay? all the exciting stuff that they can see and do, et cetera. Again, congratulations, everybody. I'm glad you, you hung out with me and, and you can take a survey if you want. Um, again, after doing these, you know, you get invited on a lot of different promotional stuff. So, um, so again, congratulations. Um, our next course uh, we are doing sandals. So if you've been with us over six months, hope to see you on Friday for our sandals um, review. Again, the course is um, posted up here under featured right here. So um, you should be able to just click on there. Hopefully I'll be able to log in and then we can start our course. So There's, you can take the course before your six months? Correct. Yeah, you have to be an agent for six months to be a part of Sandals. And this course is for agents part of Sandals. So, um, uh, because I figured they let you take the courses first, but you just can't do anything to your six months. Yeah, I, I don't think so. Um, so, hello. Um, uh, on, 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 Aura, on, Aura. Um, Los Santos. I'll be there. Thank you. 
Thanks for doing this, Marnie. Oh, of course. Thank you guys. So yeah, this looks like the, the course we'll be taking um, possibly. So again, um, you know, join us um, Friday and Saturday. Um, and then there's also Delta. Delta, you have to be with us for two months. Um, make sure you guys do if you're if you haven't done it yet. Um, it's just like Vax and Princess you have to fill out that supplier request form. Okay, guys, so if you haven't done it yet, um, you just go down here, you go to uh, Travel Cafe, and then you go down to um, Suppliers, USA Suppliers, right here. You can actually click on the supplier request form. <clears throat> and then you're gonna fill that out for sandals or for Delta, okay? And then if you haven't, if you're new and you haven't done these, make sure you do these, all of them, okay? But you can't even do that for Delta or sandals until you've been there for the required time, correct? Correct, yeah. So, you know, I, I, I'll i probably do it again, okay? And I do record these. I do put them here on my YouTube channel. So when you do hit that link or whatever, or you know, in six months or a year, I'll probably do it again for those that didn't get to, to do it originally with us. So just keep that in mind. You know, I, I try to help and, and share where I can and stuff, um, you know, and hey, Marnie. people. Uh huh. I have a quick question for you off topic. Um, for the Louisiana, the New Orleans um, uh -huh. training that we did, are we still going to do, are we going to group up and do a fam trip together? Well, I'm hoping so. We were talking about that. I have you gotten anything? Because I signed up for that fam trip right after. Um, they said they were going to view my um, credentials and then send me details, but I don't recall getting anything yet. Yeah, they told me the same thing. Okay. Yeah. So once we get it, then we can get together and say, hey, I got mine too. Okay, let's figure out a date. But yeah, I think that would be fun if we could all do it together. Okay, a, cool. A Thank group you. Trip. So yeah, um, one thing that makes sure anybody know New Orleans because they I would have to get something that was handicapped accessible. Yeah, again, there majority of the places do provide that now. So so we will make sure of that. Um, here's the training right here that you can do. And then again, after you do it, you can sign up for their fam trip. Okay, they have one in the summer, June and July, I think, and then one in the winter. Nah, we won summer. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. So again, thank you for joining me. I appreciate you all. And, um, you know, again, you're in business for yourself, but not by yourself. Um, you know, let's help each other out. I hope you guys have an amazing, amazing day. And uh, I'll be checking into my next hotel. I don't know if you want to hear. Let me see if I can take my uh, screen thing off um, and show you guys my view um, if you haven't seen it yet um, here at the resort. So let me show How you. How is the food there so far? So good. Um, I'm not really impressed. Um, but again, I haven't okay. been able to, you know, get around. Okay, if you come here, um, from my understanding, like there's two buffets, right? I'm in the pyramid. So if you did the Oasis training, make sure you choose the pyramid um, because you get access to everything. You get a, a black wristband, okay? If you don't have a black wristband, you don't get into some certain places. Um, one of the ones that I wanted to say is the buffet. Justin came and when he went to the buffet, um, we went to the nice buffet, you know, the, the China, the, the, you know, the, the metal, you know, um, silverware and stuff. The other buffet for the other buildings, it's paper uh, plates and plastic <laughs> silverware. What? Yeah. So um, just keep that in mind. Um, all right. Let me see. I'm hoping this doesn't. Okay. Now, Marnie, how did you manage to break your I, the day before I was leaving, we brought our RV back from Nebraska and I uh, was cleaning it out because we had to go store it. And I had a laundry basket full of utensils and dishes. And I went to step out and I missed the step and fell out the door 
onto my leg and um, twisted it and fractured my oh. my leg. So, but I'm like, I'm not missing this trip. Hold on, there's a big step here. Okay, there we go. Mm. All right. You are a rock star for still going on the trip. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's seriously. Beautiful. And still training us. Thank you so yeah. much. <laughs> of course. So here's here's the, the resort. Okay. Wow. That's beautiful. Yeah, you can't get a better view. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's uh I um, so yeah, look at the water, how beautiful. So yeah. I haven't been into the beach yet only because, you know, I, I'm still trying to heal. And, um, but again, um, tomorrow we check out and I go into my third resort, which is my timeshare. It's actually the crown paradise club golden shores. And, um, and I'm used to that place, so I, I'll be able to kind of maneuver better there. And here, they don't have a, a wheelchair for me all the time, so I have to, like, use my crutches, which has been hurting my shoulders and yeah. pinching. And, and look at my hair. It's, it's so humid here. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyway, it's it's just beautiful. And, and again, you know, I told Rick, you know, cause we're broke. We're totally broke. Okay. So it's like, you know, we're not rich at all. I got the free airfare through frontier at, at Thanksgiving time. Um, we got the five free nights here. So, you know, we, we brought dollars to tip, you know, um, but you know, they're all inclusive. So again, all the food and stuff's included. We did get to go to the show. If you, again, if you go to the Oasis or if you book anyone for the Oasis, their restaurants book up so quick. So, you know, we couldn't get into anything the first night we arrived. They were already booked. So that's something else to keep in mind um, for your clients. Um, you either tell them or you book it for them. Um, but so like tonight we got in um, actually set up for the uh, Italian restaurant. So we're doing that tonight. Um, but the food, uh, uh, yesterday we did the buffet for breakfast and, and lunch or breakfast and dinner and it was okay and then um and then yesterday for lunch we went to like the food court and stuff and again it was all right they have pizza french fries hot dogs the little tacos um i, I i'm a lot of times vegetarian i mean i'm a fake vegetarian because i'll eat like pepperoni on my pizza and stuff or or bake it if it's well done okay but mostly vegetarian and uh <clears throat> live aqua they had a specific menu for vegetarians they were the the live aqua is a diamond diamond resort okay um again if you did the la collection training um you get two free nights there take it guys definitely take it even if you just come for the two night um amazing resort that one has all the uh senses um you walk in one room and it's chocolate you walk in another room and it's you know lemongrass you walk in another room it's eucalyptus and they give you different sprays for your room too so you can try it out um wow. but yeah rick's like you know i could live here <laughs> he said, i don't ever want to leave here um so it's it's a very top top resort this is probably the the fifth or sixth different resort here in cancun that i've been at live aqua is the way to go but it's eight hundred dollars the room we stayed at eight hundred dollars a night for two people um but we got it for free you know it's like hello you know <laughs> That's why, I, that's why I tell people. What was the name of that course that you took for that? Um, that was La Collection. But again, um, you had to have done it by November. So the main thing you guys want to watch is um, get into the perks. Did you guys, get, are you guys in this perks group? Um, mm -hmm. Because they're always posting about fam trips and stuff. Um, let me get over here. Um, because as soon as you see something, you know, or, or, or see one that's posted, let me know so we can do it, but it's right here, evolution perks. And we have a lot of agents that are posting in here daily of different things. I posted about the Puerto Rico training of when a fam trip, um, they have agent rates in here for different things. So, um, let me put the, the group thing in here for you. Um, the link for you and then that way um, 
but you'll find out about that or watch my chats and, you know, um, or watch a lot of times people do trainings on the perks and what's available. So uh, Jamaica is another one. If you guys haven't done the Jamaica training, um, Jamaica's always giving fam trips and stuff. I got to go there for free a year and a half ago. Um, I just had to pay my airfare and they even have a butler. Miss Hernandez, what do you want iron for dinner tonight? What time do you want to go snorkeling tomorrow? I oh mean, my gosh. yeah, it's, I'm telling you, it's like, I'm, I'm a single mom from Omaha, Nebraska, and I'm in a freaking Jamaica with a butler, you know? Um, so that's what you do. And then you just share your, your, um, posts and stuff on social media and then people are like how can you do that how are you doing that dream how are you doing that dear you know and then um you're like i'm a travel agent all you have to do you know here's a video explains everything about the business and um uh, and then there you go now you have you know and you guys only need six partners in your business to be able to sorry i'm gonna probably fall over doing this um you only need six partners in your business to to get your monthly covered. So that's why I try to tell like all my new agents, guys, get in and and um, share this opportunity. Ah! Set my fat butt on this curtain. <laughs> all right. OK, so again, you guys, I'm so sorry you've been on for over three hours, but it was fun. <laughs> it was good. It was really good. Yes, it was. I mean, dang, they yeah. gave us all the information about Alaska. Huh? It's like, whoa. So, um, so yeah, so let's just have some fun. Um, think of things you want to do next month. We're doing Israel this month. We're doing India. Um, we're doing, uh, what else are we doing? Um, when are some missions for next month open? Um, you can start letting me know now I have, um, I have, uh, uh, Christine Whitaker that does my calendar for me, uh, for the, for the certificates. So anytime you guys want to do something, just let me know. And then I add that to the calendar and then we kind of figure out which days we want to do it. Um, now we have this list here that we've already done trainings on. So, um, so are we able to do Key West? Yeah, um, I think we actually have Key West on here. Let me look. Get my mouse. Oh, I got to plug this thing back in. Sorry, hold on. <clears throat> there we go. Um, can you see my screen? Hold on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so Key West, H I J K. Oh, I thought we did Key West, but we did some some thing on here but um yeah i'll put key west on there i have people wanting to go there so i keep asking for it <laughs> oh no okay i don't know why we didn't okay i will send it to her now and tell her and make sure she puts it on the list um there we i think it's listed under florida key west oh is that it maybe that's it yeah because i saw it on the list i just prefer to do the the live yep, there it is. <laughs> yeah here it is florida key west but maybe we'll do a different one. So here, you can go in here now and look at it um, if you want. Uh, let me give you this spreadsheet. So you can watch the video or you can go in and do the training, whichever you want to do. Um, you know, and again, um, a lot of these, these California ones here, once you complete them all, you get an actual gift, a gift bag in the mail. Um, <laughs> So that's what I'm saying. You get a lot of amazing perks. You get invited on lunch and learns. You get invited on special webinars, special vacations, stuff like that. So just keep plugging in. Let me know what you guys need, what you want to do for next month, and then uh, and then we'll keep going. Okay. So, Maureen, let me ask you a question. Uh-huh. Um when you guys started um posting a lot of stuff like on Facebook. Facebook and different things like that. Did you start getting bombarded by Fred requests? Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. And, and you get in, you get bombarded by weird friend requests and stuff. So <laughs> yeah. So you a look. I've, I've had everybody in their brother. Yeah. Um, friend re requesting me, and I I had just a couple of them. I'm like, where did you see? 
what what made you pick Fred request me? And they said, <laughs> well, oh, it was a recommendation. Yeah. And I was like, that's weird because I've been on Facebook for years and I've never gotten that. And now since I've been posting for jobs and posting for different things, I mean, in less than a week, I've had over 600 people friend request me. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna get um, a lot of that. Now, what I did, you know, and, and again, guys, here's my Facebook page. You guys can share anything I post. Like I this one I just put up here and I got a, a lot of interaction so far. Um, 96, 98 people have already viewed it and I just reposted it today. Um, so, but what I used to do, and that's how I got, I got like 11,000 followers now it looks like. But what I used to do is I'd go here and, and, and I'd look at who commented or who looked at my post, right? Mm -hmm. And then I would go in like here and it's like, who's that, you know, or, or, okay, I don't know them. Um, like here, okay. Add a friend. I don't know who that is, but they're watching me or they liked my travel page. So I'm going to friend them. And that's how, you know, I ended up because I'm like, if you're already watching me, then you're going to like what I do next, you know, and, and, and try to get, you know, more business partners, you know, and that's how I did it or clients, you know, um, but yeah, you're going to get a lot of people from India and, and, you know, Asia and Philippines and, you know, and you're going to get a lot of people saying that they're travel professional tour companies that they want to work with you and stuff. So, so I'm not the only sure, one. Yeah. Make no, sure you got to be really careful. Right. Just weed them out. And, and a lot of agents also don't friend other agents because you want, you know, you're already working with them over in the chat rooms and stuff. Um, but I friend a lot of agents because I want them to, uh, I want to share what I have to, you know, so they can share the same. Um, you know, so I, I post a lot, you know, about animals. This is when we were having lunch yesterday, the peacock. Is oh, our, that's pretty. Yeah. Um, this is a little... Uh, there he is walking by. So they had little huts with food. Come on, you want some dinner? I, I want you to take a picture. <laughs> See, look how beautiful, look how beautiful I am. But just want to. Wait, the peacock's show. name was Button? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Um, let me see. Okay. This is the pyramid. Okay. So this is where we're at today. Um, we're in the atrium. So, um, this is the, one of the suites. Okay. Up at the top. So, um, there's the view that I just showed you. Um, yeah. And then, uh, I mean, look how beautiful. So, and then the atrium. Hi dear. Get more chips? Uh, no, they haven't been back. Okay. Can, okay, can you give me a mojito or a margarita? Are we going to go down for lunch? Yeah. Are you almost done? Yeah. Okay, we'll go. Okay. So this is the atrium. Our room's like right up here. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a real nice resort. Now there's, if you look at the reviews, a lot of people have complained about it, said it's musty, old, um, stuff like that. So again, here's another one. They have seven of these on the, um, oh. on the, at the hotel. Um, again, the amenities they have, but let me show you the other one. Oh, and then VIP. So we're VIP when you check <laughs> in. Um, was it just bears? So yeah, this was, oh, this was the buffet we ate at. Okay, this is at the Live Aqua. And, and there's another, my other friend, Lizard. Oh, he's cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, the Live Aqua, oh, the breakfast was amazing. This was like chile, chilequis or whatever. Um, the restaurants there, um, this was the dinner restaurant. Um, definitely, definitely make sure you go here uh, again, a vegetarian, they had a piano player over there. Um, this was kind of like a, uh, what's it called? Um, 
what's it called? The the mozzarella basil and mozzarella cheese. What's it? What's that salad called? Caprice. Oh. But but it looks weird, huh? It's, this is a tomato kind of like rice. Oh, twig. interesting. Yeah, but it was really good. It was really good. Um, well, I thought that was salmon. I know that's <laughs> you do. It's like wow, oh, what is that? Um, this was a some kind of a soup. That was Rick's avocado kind of toast. That was a, his shrimp. Oh, this was a haba habanero soup in a bread oh, bowl. My. And you know, you think, oh my gosh, but no, it wasn't hot at all. <laughs> That's um, awesome. This is a potato steak. Okay. This is oh, interesting. Potatoes. Um, again, everything was was so delicious. This was his steak. I don't know what kind of I think it was filet or something. And then they did me a happy birthday. Nice. This I thought was like ham or something, but Rick said it was some kind of a fruit. And this was kind of like a cream egg or something. Oh, interesting. <laughs> this is all and that's all inclusive. That's, That's all inclusive. Yes. Wow. I'm telling you, 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 you guys take advantage of our amazing perk. So, um, so we'll, they'll have more, they'll have more coming up. So again, um, you know, just stay plugged in and stuff and, um, and, you know, we'll, we'll keep you notified of, of ones that give away trips and stuff. And, you know, again, if you hear of anything, let me know and we'll add it to the schedule. Great. Okay. Thanks, Marnie. All right. You're welcome. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Um, Caroline, are you still on here? I am. Okay. I promise you I'm going to either get back to you this afternoon or tomorrow. All I have is a check-in at the other hotel. Okay. But right now we're going to go down and get something to eat, but I'll be in contact with you. Okay. Thank you so much. Appreciate All right. It. You're welcome. You guys have a great day. Bye. Bye. Okay. You too. Thanks. Bye. Have guys. a great day, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Have a good day, everybody. Bye. -bye.